Good morning, everybody. How you doing? It's uh, it's your buddy Uncle Bruce here from Stock Markets with Bruce. Welcome to this morning's show. It's uh, today's date, Tuesday, August the tenth, twenty twenty one. I'm getting ready to open up here in the morning. Uh, we have a mixed market um, right at the moment. The Dow is off seventeen points, a little bit. The uh, S and P is up. 0.8 of a point and Nasdaq is up 19. So it's pretty flat this morning. Um, there's no real bad news out there. There's no real great news out there. It is so far just kind of a calm opening. Oil is up a dollar fifteen to sixty seven sixty three. Um, we're not getting a massive recovery on oil at the moment. Uh, there isn't like a, a you know a, a snapback recovery of gargantuan proportions coming for oil. Uh, the reason is. There's so much of it everywhere. Um, oil was anticipated to hit 90 bucks a barrel. A lot of oil had been planned to be delivered now for increased needs, and um, it's not there. Um, the uh, the uh, numbers are just not lining up as per how many barrels were thought to be needed versus how many are now available. So with the demand lower, the supply higher, you have the, the price of oil under pressure. This is a good thing for inflation. Um, and this is, this would mean that a good thing for the markets, good thing for interest rates. Also, the other thing that's happening in the last several days now, but last week, commodity prices for stuff like copper, iron ore, um, uh, lead, other, other ingredients to make products with it dropping dramatically. Commodity prices have been dropping quickly. Um, and again, it's because of the surprising uh, trend of a slowing Chinese economy. That this has caught a lot of people off guard because the thinking was that with a recovery, with COVID kind of out of the way, uh, China would ramp up, and um, and this would you know, the rest of the world would ramp up as well. And of course, the demand for goods, services, products would would rise accordingly. The problem in China is that um, they have a, a vaccine there that they're using, uh, but apparently the, the word coming out of China and other areas is that the vaccine they're using is, is not very effective against the new variant, the COVID variant of the virus. And so China is quickly shutting down all over the place. There are disruptions everywhere in China, including um, little thing I mentioned last night on my uh, Traveling with Bruce channel, I was talking about cruise ship uh, vacations and traveling trends and what's going on out there in the, tr in the world of travel. And it was announced, I guess, 24 hours ago, very suddenly and without a lot of explanation, that um, one of the cruise lines called Viking Ocean Cruises, uh, they have about nine or 10 ocean going uh, cruise ships very, very high end, really nice. One of their ships was um, um, sold, I guess is the way to say it. The, 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 the Viking people created a cruise line with the Chinese government. Um, and the Viking Sun ship was shipped over to China about a year ago, has been remodeled and completely redesigned simply and purely for Chinese tourists ocean going tours. So all the signage on the ship and the menus and the kitchens and everything completely uh, converted over for, you know, the comfort of, of Chinese guests. They were supposed to start sailing in August, they had been selling out cruises like crazy over there, from very well to do Chinese nationals who want to go on these holidays. Now the Chinese government loves this deal because they totally control the ships itinerary, who gets on the ship, uh, how much people are paying, which people get priority, and you can, you know, put the dots together if you know my feeling on China. If you have connections uh, and you are in a, a good standing of the party, you get to go on this luxury cruise ship for these luxury cruises because there's a lot of status involved in being able to travel as a Chinese national. In any event, um, just 24 hours ago, without any explanation, all cruises are canceled until further notice. Now, normally, a cruise line would say something like, um, due to the COVID variant uh, situation, 
We're going to cancel, say, uh, postpone cruises for August and September. And then we'll, you know, give you new credits. We'll figure it out. There is no restart date. There's no, there's no, they haven't started yet, to be honest. This ship hasn't sailed with a paying passenger yet. This is supposed to be the first month of, of inaugural cruising for, out of China. Uh, no, no start date. Further notice. Uh, everything canceled until further notice. And it, it, as is telling a lot of people in the cruise industry that, oh man, there's problems over there. Because if they are knocking off uh, cruises, where I can tell you there was no way you would have been able to get on that ship unless you were fully vaccinated in the first place. Second of all, you would have been you would have tested negative on a test at the dock. I mean, you would have you would have had probably daily testing. The, the Chinese have figured out or, or are saying in a in a roundabout way, I guess, that uh, this variant is so vicious and so virulent that they can't control it, and uh, they they don't even trust their own testing and their own viruses and their own vaccines, I should say, their own vaccines, to even conduct um, five-day and seven-day cruises on a cruise ship that's only going to government-approved locations uh, within China. And so um, we got us a problem here, Houston. Uh, there's a big problem in China, and um, the Chinese are not talking about it. They don't want to talk about it. They want, you know, they, they want to be the superpower, the up-and-comer, and uh, respect us and all this uh, bravado. The reality, though, is that they are rotting on the inside. Um, they are having uh, trouble controlling the virus within their own country because they have kept open these um, travel routes between themselves and, for example, Iran. Uh, if you're an Iranian um, uh, individual with a certain status or higher, you have no trouble in tra traveling internationally to, to many countries, including China. And there are direct flights uh, from Iran to many cities in China. And China is trying to do a lot of business with Iran. China and Iran are, you know, we're both against the USA, basically, is what they're thinking of, or we're against the West. We have more in common with each other than not. And uh, the Iranians uh, have weapons and oil and the Chinese have everything and so the two are doing a lot of trading together and so there are a bunch of flights daily flights between Iran and China um, to do business you know, for for business and travel um, and so what you may have noticed in the you know in the first months of the breakout Iran just had a massive breakout of the virus because it came from Wuhan and so the Chinese are infecting the Iranians and the Iranians are, are reinfecting the Chinese. And so the India variant and all it is spreading like crazy. And so now you have these countries who are doing, you know, really tight relations are, are having real problems. And uh, the Chinese do not want to publicly admit, because that would be losing face, that they're losing the war on the virus from within. And uh, now they're now beginning to shut down certain activities and it's becoming apparent to those of us in the West, hey, uh, how come the how come all these container ships aren't coming over with all these so-called goods that we're buying that we're ordering? Um, Chinese made, you name it. Is, is is there's delays? There's there's all kinds of interruptions. There's all kinds of glitches in the system. Well, it's because the Chinese have got themselves a huge huge problem, and the the uh, the big problem right now is that this virus is running rampant throughout China and um, they're trying to shut down entire cities to, to control it and it's not working. It's it's like um, whack-a-mole. It's popping up all over the place and they're trying to suppress the information as much as they can to keep it out of the Western media so that they don't come off as a bumbling third world, you know, communist dictator type country, <laughs> which they are. <laughs> In any event, um, they lashed out today and they, uh, they uh, announced uh, that a Canadian who's been, uh, who's been uh, convicted of some kind of a drug offense, I think it was some kind of uh, uh, weightlifting performance um, drugs, he was given a 15-year sentence like two years ago. Um, he appealed the sentence uh, and then they, they upped the, the, the conviction from 15 years to de the death penalty. Uh, two years ago, and uh, this was then appealed again, and today they denied the appeal, and they still sentenced him to death. So now it goes to another tribunal or some kind. Anyway, this is complete 
reaction. This is an absolute uh, reaction to uh, uh, an arrest that was made by Canada of a Chinese uh, lady in Vancouver who was on her way to, I think, uh, South America or something like that. She was flying from Hong Kong to Vancouver and then Vancouver to, not sure if she was headed to Mexico City where she was. Anyway, the United States wanted to arrest this woman on charges of uh, money laundering and, and, and bribes and whatever, all having to do with this Huey uh, cellular phone company. Anyway, this woman has been under house arrest in Canada. She's been allowed to stay in her her well-to-do house in Vancouver wearing an ankle bracelet and her lawyers, which are the crack team of lawyers in Canada, I cannot imagine the legal bills that this woman is paying because she's a billionaire. She's a billionaire. Um, there are billions of dollars to support her. Um, there are lawyers fighting the extradition of, of her to the U.S. Canada's caught in the middle going, we're just following the law here. We've got an extradition treaty with the United States and anyone that comes into Canada is now technically able to be extradited to the United States. In any event, um, this woman's case has been going on now for three years. And as soon as uh, she was arrested, China immediately arrested uh, two diplomats, uh, former diplomats, Canadian diplomats, who, who were working now for hate organizations. They accused them of being spies. And they're now accusing them of you know espionage to the highest degree. And uh, they're not allowing anyone to see them and all this crap. And this guy, this one guy over here, who was in this uh, drug thing uh, is now give, being given a death sentence. So, I mean, the Chinese are just coming down really hard on any Canadians that they can nab over there. Um, and uh, uh, we're having all kinds of fun with these guys. And the Chinese are, are telling us to shut the hell up and just do what, do what we're told because, you know, we're a superpower and you're not. And Canadians don't take too kindly to that. Uh, we kind of, you know, we kind of like go, screw you, assholes. But, uh, yeah, what are you going to do? Uh, personally, uh, I would just like to see the federal government grow a spine and just say to them, well, we're not exporting any food to you guys. No wheat, no barley, no oats, no nothing. No, no food. We're not, no Canadian food will go to China. Period. Done. And, end of story. We'll sell it to someone else. Um, and then uh, deny them uh, fly rights, over, over, overhead flying rights. Because from, from China to Europe, you know, they kind of fly over and all that. We'll deny them airspace rights and just cut them off. Just, you know, cut them off. Uh, but it's not being done because, you know, it's kind of diplomatically difficult to do. There's such deep ties between Canada and China, actually, that it's difficult to do. And, the, you know, the Chinese are rattling their saber right now. Uh, in the meantime, this, this woman in Vancouver it, it has an ankle bracelet, um, uh, is living in her house, uh, which, which she owns in Vancouver. She actually has residency in Canada, which is kind of weird. Uh, and, uh, and her lawyers have been fighting her extradition for years and years and years. And it looks more and more shaky on the American side that the charges seem to be a bit kind of suspect. But, uh, but uh, you know, no one wants to lose face here. Uh, a lot of behind the scenes crap going on. In the meantime, innocent Canadians have been in jail over there for 450 days in serious prison time without charges, without official, no court appearances, no nothing. Uh, they're just held in limbo and um, no right to see them and, you know, all this sort of stuff. I think, I think Canadian diplomats are getting access to these guys once a month for an hour or something like that. They can talk to them for once a month. The family, they can't even write them letters. I mean, it, it's just a complete cut-off. So it's like being in a maximum security prison waiting official investigations to be done. I mean, it's just bullshit. Pure crap from the Chinese end, and uh, they're just lashing out. The Americans aren't backing down, going, screw you guys, uh, we're, we're not intimidated by you guys. Uh, Canadians are going, we're in the middle. Uh, we got Canadians in jail over there, can't get them out. Uh, we got this woman in under house arrest. And we're treating her as gently as we can. Uh, and the Chinese are just going nuts. And so uh, we're having fun up here. Uh, you know, like I say, I, I think we should just, you know, just up the stakes. I mean, you know, they're hungry. We got the food. Cut them off. Just phew, let's get their attention. I guess we just, you know, you know whatever. We just don't want to do that. Uh, yeah, I just, I just kind of go, wow, unbelievable. Chinese, uh, communist governments are easy to topple, actually. Uh, you just have to make it very difficult for the population to, you know, live a normal life and then they get out they get antsy and when you have 1.3 billion people getting antsy i don't care how many people in the military you have i don't care how many secret police you have i don't care how many bribes have to be paid to officials i don't care how corrupt your system is it falls down and uh this is a this has happened uh, like time and again with communist regimes but anyway what can i say i'm just an old man ranting and i'm just a little upset at him <laughs> 
Uh, here in North America, uh, we're wondering about interest rates. That's what we're wondering about right now. Uh, are interest rates going to go up? And if they are, by how much? Um, from where I sit here, uh, from this vantage point in Canada, um, looking at the interest rates of the rest of the world, uh, the Americans are dreamy if they are thinking of raising their rates. They are they're on another planet that doesn't exist anymore. Gone are the days, absolutely gone are the days where the Americans can dictate world interest rates. It's over. It, it, uh, they might be the last to realize it, actually. My, my friends in the U.S. might be the last to realize it. The greatest country in the world isn't the leader anymore. You, you're one of, leader, one of the leaders. Uh, the G20 or the G8 or the G10 or the European Union or... There are other clusters of power centers now that are kind of, we've all kind of re-equilibrating, equilibrating, I can't remember the word. We're all kind of evening out. And so um, in Europe, interest rates are negative. They're not even positive. They are negative. And there's no way the Americans can raise European rates. There's, there's no way. Europeans do not need American money to survive anymore. This isn't, this, this isn't 1946. This isn't 1952. Um, this is 2021. This is 70, 80 years since the Second World War. It's over. Uh, the U Europeans have moved on and they have got capital, global access to capital, and they generate a lot of capital. And so uh, they can look after themselves, uh, and they are. And they are um, uh, in a situation where the United States cannot help Europe get more wealthy right now because the Americans can't afford it. The American economy is struggling on its own not everywhere uh, there are certain places in the united states where it's great all is great but as a whole the united states doesn't have the economic power it had one time about 40 years ago 50 years ago it's just not there anymore um <clears throat> europe uh is is trying to stay out of recession they're in recession have been now for six months europe is in a recession as a whole they're trying to get out of it by having virtually no interest rates, encouraging anyone in Europe to get a mortgage, buy a new car, build an addition to your house, whatever. But at the same time, Europe is going, yeah, but we can't, we can't let Europeans freely go about the world because there's a pandemic here and we're, we're, we're struggling over here as well. And so it's kind of like we want to get the economy going, but we're got one hand tied behind our back and we can't we can't get this thing running so the the atmosphere and the 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 economic ability of european corporations to expand is is wide open a very generous tax policies very generous government um, assistance um for example uh, uh, shipyards where they produce cruise ships and container ships and any kind of mar mar maritime vessels European shipbuilding uh, centers are a very important deal to European countries because you may have, like an auto plant in the United States, you may have a, an assembly station, a, a final you know, shipbuilding location in, say, Norway or, or Germany or France or other countries. But <clears throat> you're talking about employing five to 10 to 20,000 people at that location. But you're also talking about hundreds of thousands of other people who are employed because of components being made off-site and being delivered to the, the final assembly place, the shipyard for final assembly. So every cruise ship that leaves uh, the Werft shipyard in Poppenburg, Germany, um, you're talking about thousands of uh, hundreds of companies and tens of thousands of employees in all of Europe, all over Europe who are producing the furniture, the, uh, the literally they're, they're building the, the, uh, the cabins, the actual cabins that go into a cruise ship. They're pre-made, they're modular. And they're just brought in by rail or truck. And then they are lifted by cranes and they are literally dropped into a cruise ship under construction. And the, the, uh, the modular cabin <laughs> say balcony cabin is um, is uh, pre-wired, pre-plumbed, and you need only to connect it once you drop it in there. So underneath the cabin, you've got pipe fitters in the hallways. You got the pipes and the 
wiring and all being the cabin is ready to roll the minute it's dropped in there within a couple hours it you can turn the lights on you can flush a toilet you're good to go you're doing literally deck after deck after deck of prefab uh work on all of these cruise ships from from cabins to restaurants to the casino area on and on it goes and so these shipyards are giant assembly centers um uh, with the welders and the painters and all the others that are there to you know, make this all work. Governments in Europe um, are working together to keep these uh, shipyards running because they, they know this is a domino effect. If the Poppenberg shipyard shuts down, we are talking about an immediate area of 15,000 unemployed. Then we're talking about 200 to 300,000 people unemployed throughout all of Europe. This isn't good. Uh, this just leads to more layoffs and more slowdown. Not going to do it. N -g -da. And so between France, Germany, Norway, Finland, Sweden, uh, Italy, uh, Austria, you, you name it, all the countries in the year, they all support their businesses. They are they're, they're there to, to help them with very generous financing terms to keep these projects going. So for an outfit like Royal Caribbean, Norwegian and Carnival, the three big cruise lines that own, you know, three quarters of the entire world's cruise market or more. These guys have been able to negotiate very generous terms to keep building new cruise ships, even though they can't cruise. And in the last year and a half, um, uh, cruise ships have come out of these yards completed and new ships have started, uh, even though uh, these cruise lines can't sail these ships. And the deal is that literally uh, a cruise line will take delivery of a ship after it's all completed, a billion dollar build out on a ship. Uh, they'll take the vessel, uh, the sea trials will be done, she'll, she'll be completely certified and they won't make a single payment on the ship until the first paying customer is on the ship. And We've had in some cases, uh, some of these ships like the Mardi Gras for Carnival, for example, the Carnival's largest cruise ship, it only just did its first cruise. Like in the last month, it just started cruising. That ship was finished a year and a half ago. Uh, no payments were necessary uh, at all. The, the meter, the clock doesn't start ticking on payments until they actually start sailing. And even then, they have set up caveats. Uh, deals have been made like you cannot believe that are so generous to the cruise line where the, the countries as a whole, the, the, the entire ship is financed by the Export Development Bank of country, blah, whatever. And that bank is funded by the government of the country with negative interest rates. I mean, it's, 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 it's free money. It's negative interest rates on these deals. And so the cruise ship company uh, that ends up getting this vessel will only pay a percentage of the payments as they raise the occupancy level on board the ship, making it very viable, very economically viable. But you will not find these details in the fine print on the news releases. Uh, Carnival won't, won't divulge these deals because they're top secret. But I can tell you that they are been, they've been given very generous finance terms to keep building these ships. The second ship for Carnival the twin ship of the Mardi Gras is under construction. We'll be ready next year. Full speed ahead, full blown natural gas powered ship. The Iona from PO Cruises, which is, I believe, PO is also a carnival line. That ship just did its inaugural, first inaugural voyage. It's happening right now with its first paying passengers. And it's only sailing around Europe at like 35%, or sailing around the UK only with 35% occupancy, British nationals only. So um, even that ship officially sailing with paying passengers, Carnival's not on the hook for the full payment on this ship either. And uh, we're dealing here with every quarter going by, every six months going by, we're dealing with billions of dollars of vessels being delivered to these cruise lines for nothing, for, for zero cash, none expected. And um, millions of hours of employee hours have been paid for by these banks, which are funded by the governments who are borrowing money from the European Central Bank at negative rates, at like zero. And so this is how far, how the, the extent of how far the European Central Bankers are going to keep their businesses afloat. I'm just talking about cruise ships. This is just this is one little sliver of a sliver. The automotive sector, the housing sector, 
um, and all other aspects of business in Europe are being heavily, heavily supported by their governments and by their uh, banks uh, and by the European Central Bank. The U.S. Treasury can't stop this. They can't get in the middle of it. They can't. Uh, they can't force the Europeans to raise rates. They they they, they can't do it. The problem the American um, economy has, or the American government has, or the, the Federal Reserve is that the United States is a net borrower of money. The United States constantly borrows money from around the world uh, by issuing treasury notes and bonds every week. <coughs> and the United States government is rolling over bonds that are maturing from five years ago, 10 years ago, uh, 15 years ago, 20, 30 years ago. All these bonds mature every week from way back when. And new bonds need to be issued today to roll over the debt of yesterday and keep this thing going. Now, the good news for the American taxpayer and investors around the world is that the American government is actually lowering the cost of its debt obligations every week, has been for five years. Interest rates are so low now, so low on US debt that the US government will issue a new 30-year bond or a 10-year note at such a cheap rate now, at even 1.3%, that um, they are basically buying back debt or rolling out debt that they were paying three to five percent interest on and replacing it with one to two percent interest now no politician brags about this because uh, republican politicians are never going to brag about this because one it makes the existing government whoever's in power look good number one number two uh, the Republicans, you know, uh, are abhorrent whether it comes to oh, we I can't we can't stand owing money to anybody. But then they love spending it. <laughs> so they love to spend it, but they hate to admit how they pay for it. And how they're paying for it is they're borrowing more cash today to pay off yesterday's cash. And then on top of that, the the extra cash coming in is funding the current deficit that's being run right now. And the world can't give the America enough money because America is paying the highest interest rates in the world for a G20 country. Uh, they're, 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 they're the biggest creditor, the biggest payer of interest out there. And as long as America is number one, uh, the world will keep knocking, beating a path to the treasury and say, how much do you want to borrow from us? We'll lend you all kinds of money. And so there are pension funds in Europe and in Asia and South America and Africa and everywhere else that are lending the American government all they want and happy to take one, one and a half percent because in their home country, they're getting negative half a percent or point, uh, negative point two or zero or point zero zero one percent out of the Japanese government. I mean, there's no return. So they're better off getting one, one and a half percent, two percent from the American government than getting nothing from their own. And so a lot of money is available to America. Now, uh, why should America raise interest rates? Uh, of course, the the, 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 this is a great little game we got going here. Why should America bother raising rates if rates, if money is available cheap? Um, and if the American government keeps spending much, much more than it brings in, it needs the money. The money is being offered uh, just on a silver platter. Take all, take all you want for 1%, 1.5%. You can have all you want. The game continues. Well, the game will continue until there is no more debt to roll over from years gone by at higher rates. When the day comes, and the day is coming, they'll get to the point where America has to roll over debt at the same price they used to pay five, 10, 15 years ago. And or America has to actually pay more in interest going forward than the interest that they're rolling out of. So the old 10-year note that expires at 1.1% is now having to be rolled over at 1.7% or 2.2%. This is bad news for the American taxpayer, bad news for the American economy, because now the Treasury needs even more money to pay the new interest rates on all this cash being rolled over. And this is where the concern is from many, many players out there, bond players going, right now it's good, but this can't go on because eventually we have to pay more. Germany is sitting back going, well, we're rolling over our 30 year old debt right now. We used to pay two, four, six percent interest way back when we're taking that in. We're taking those bonds. We're buying them back at the end of their 30 years. We one, we have the cash to just pay for them. 
We don't actually need to borrow any money. We're running a surplus in Germany as a country. We have a surplus, even as socialistic as we are supporting all this business we're supporting, we still have a surplus. But nonetheless, no, the Germans are, are quite happy to continue to go to the bond market and borrow money for negative money. They're happy to do it. <coughs> and so they borrow money at negative half a percentage point pay off and roll over debt that they're paying four, five, six percent on from decades ago and reissue it as new negative interest debt. The German economy is, is getting stronger every week that the rollover continues. The cost of the German taxpayer is dropping every week, which means the surplus keeps growing in Germany. It's a non-ending win-win streak. Where on the American side, it's a losing streak that, yeah, for now, America is also spending less in interest than it used to pay. The problem is America is borrowing more every week than it used than it needed in the past, where Germany is borrowing less every week than it needed in the past. Because Germany doesn't need any extra cash. It's just rolling over the old debt. And when you issue debt 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when that debt comes maturing today, um, the 30-year debt you issued back in 1992, for example, that's maturing now, or 1991, those are 1991 dollars. In 2021, the dollars are uh, inflationary. They're much more inflationary. And so, in effect, if you borrowed $100 billion in a month back in 1991 for the whole month, that $100 billion today is, is uh, you know, it's chump change uh, because today America is borrowing three hundred billion dollars a month or, or more, whatever the numbers are. Uh, we're dealing with with dollars that that have shrunk in value. Those are sixty cent dollars that are maturing now because of inflation, and so inflation is a good thing actually for governments. Believe it or not, another good thing for governments on inflation is that your taxes keep going up because as you get raises to compensate for inflation, you go up in tax, you go up to ta higher tax brackets. Eventually, you start, you start hitting new brackets. And as you hit new brackets, your taxes get higher as a percentage of how much you generate. In effect, you're getting a, a pay cut because you're getting more money because you need more cash for the inflation that you're suffering. But now you're they're taking a bigger chunk of that money to pay the taxes. So your net net money is less, less than it was five years ago, 10 years ago. And so this is where the standard of living goes down. And, and this is what happened to America and Canada and other countries around the world in the 70s and the 80s, especially late 60s, 70s and 80s, because we used to be able to buy a car every two to three years, a new car. Now, a new car is purchased by a North American every eight to 10 years, uh, because you wait five, you've got to pay it off for five, six years. Then you think about getting a new one. Uh, in, in the 60s, it was quite common to be able to be able to buy with cash a new car every two to three years automatically because one they didn't last more than five years and two you could afford it and that was what was happening with the middle class in the united states and canada back in the 60s and this and the early 70s those days are gone and so as interest rates climbed in the 70s 60s 70s and 80s uh the american and canadian standard of living dropped 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 and what did we do we began to look for deals we began to become in, uh, deal shoppers. And uh, the first thing we did was we went to discount stores. The second thing that the discount stores did is they popped up all over the place like Costco's and Sam's Clubs and Walmarts, massive companies that make product overseas for pennies on the dollar, imported into the country and knock out the little guy with their size and volume and offer the North American shopper a, a middle-class lifestyle uh, to continue that at a, at a cheaper cost. And so the spatula that you're buying in, the, in your kitchen in 1964 might have cost $1.50. In, um, in 2021, the spatula you're buying today is $1.50, buck 75. But in reality, it's like it's 25 cents, inflation adjusted. These have gone down in price. Televisions, uh, color TVs used to be $1,000 in 1962. To buy a console color television was $1,000. Mortgage payments in 1962 were 80 to to $100 a month. So you were paying one year of your mortgage to buy a television. And a TV in 1962 had a life expectancy, a color television, five to 10 years was 
the reliability factor because he, they were tubes. They ran on tubes. Every year you had to have the TV technician in to replace the tubes. So you automatically had on televisions a, uh, a at least a 10% a year maintenance fee to keep the televisions working. Where today, we think nothing of a TV running five years and then we throw it away and get another one because that, that's we can afford that like we used to get cars. But um, um, the in those days, you could afford or some people could afford a thousand dollars for a television when that represented a year of mortgage payments or a year of rent one year rent to buy a television unthinkable standard of living we just don't have that anymore so you can see how things have evolved and changed out where governments today are borrowing money for cheaper than it cost in the past they can keep this game going the problem is the governments are gambling big time they're rolling the dice that Free enterprise will step up and pick up the slack and get the economy growing. Because if the economy can grow anywhere, income taxes grow, sales taxes grow, uh, excise taxes come in, taxes come in. It's it, higher activity, higher economic activity means more taxes at every level of government, which is a good thing because you want governments to be running surpluses, not deficits. You don't want governments borrowing money against the interest of private enterprise. You want private enterprise to be able to borrow cheaply, not necessarily government. If governments don't have to borrow, then there's more capital lying around for car companies to build new car plants or um, chip companies to build new chip plants without government help and assistance, taking the pressure off the taxpayer to have to fund the growth of an economy. And so this uh, this game continues. But right now, it's not happening across the board, and there are inconsistencies with the economy. So we see Apple, with these devices, do really well. They're building these like crazy. We're buying them like cuckoo. We love these things. And Apple's making a lot of money. The problem is that there are 15 other companies that make stuff like this, and not all of them are doing as well as Apple is doing. And uh, the reality is that Apple is making a huge amount of its money from North American and European clients. People like me, people like you. The difficulty with that is that this item is not made in North America. This is made in China. And uh, almost everything to do with this machine is not North America. It is foreign. Yet the profits are made in North America and Europe some in china of course chinese are buying these too but this is not the number one phone you know by a million yards in china this is one of many phones available in china uh the problem here is that um, apple is not investing its profits and and, and and building new factories in austin or dallas or atlanta or minneapolis or st louis or cleveland or you know or trenton or or where where business is needed to be had it's not happening and the Apple is scrambling to pay less and less in taxes by you know, having foreign er earnings stay offshore. They don't want to repatriate money back to America. And so the U.S. government's the loser. The consumer is a winner in a way, but they're also a loser because we are paying over $1,000 to get this thing. But it only earns 50 bucks to make. It looks great, and it's an amazing piece of technology. And if you only made 100,000 of these a year, these would be $10,000 each. But because millions of these are made every year, every every month, the cost per person is much lower. But the reality is that these could be sold for $99.99. These could be sold for $149.99, and the company would still make money. But they're not going to do it because they're technologically leading and they're getting the, the top phone. This is what free enterprise is all about. Uh, for us, though, um, and for the, for the interest rates and for the world at large, Governments out there are trying to spur business everywhere to get the economies going, and they are borrowing heavily to make it happen. The American uh, voter is being bombarded by uh, certain politicians to say, this is all wrong. We shouldn't be doing this. Uh, we, you know, we, we really, this is not the job of our government. Other governments around the world are saying, we will do this because it's in our national interest to keep our, 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 our citizens employed in the jobs that they have we need to support our mothers and fathers and grandmothers and, and uncles and aunts and kids to keep the schools going uh, keep the factories going keep people paying their mortgages keep people making their car payments and their insurance and quality of life um, 
and this is a national priority for us. And uh, governments are some governments are unafraid to brag about that. Or certain governments, the United States might be one of them. They talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. They talk about the quality of life, and America's great, but they don't want to invest in their citizens. They really don't. And certain politicians do, certain politicians do not, and then you use the word socialism and you tie it in with communism and you confuse the hell out of most of most people going, what, what the hell's going on, what does it all mean? Europeans looking in on the United States and going, what's with these guys? Uh, why don't they support themselves? <laughs> this infrastructure thing, why is it taking so long to approve a bill to fix their highways? Why, why can't they just do that? Why, why is this such a big deal all the time? And there's the difference between philosophies and political agendas and, and the way it is. Welcome to, to the World 101. In the meantime, the question is, what will interest rates really do in the near future? And the thinking on, the, on Wall Street in some quarters is, well, the Fed might start tapering. They might cut back the amount of money that they're supplying banks with to go forth and lend. They might make it a little more expensive or not so much money available. Um, the the uh, business uh, people out there are saying to the Fed, uh, that's not a good idea uh, because, um, frankly, uh, if, if Whirlpool, for example, the Whirlpool Corporation, cannot get enough capital to build washing machines and dryers and dishwashers and refrigerators in American plants, they will build plants elsewhere and they will be funded by governments elsewhere very generously to build appliances there, and they will just import them into the United States. So if you can build a, a washer and dryer set in Vietnam for $100, where that washer dryer set to be built in, uh, in Indiana, where Mike Pence hangs out, if that costs in Indiana $300 to build for the set, but only $100 to build in Vietnam or so, um, it isn't $200 in shipping to get it into the United States, and there's no duties uh, that are gonna knock it out because they're gonna stop producing in the US and the American uh, uh, government cannot say, well, um, it costs $300 to build the washer and dryer in the United States. And the company goes, what are you talking about? We don't build any in the United States. There's nowhere to, you can't compare that number anymore. The reality is to build a washer and dryer costs $100 in Vietnam. And so the duty might be 5%, $5 to the American government. Uh, you, uh, the buyer of the washer and dryer, you will pay dearly for that washer and dryer because there are, there's less competition for it. Uh, Home Depot buys up all production of, of Whirlpool, of a certain models that they carry. Lowe's buys up certain production of the models that they carry. Costco buys certain models of Whirlpool washers and dryers that they carry. And you go to all three stores, you can't find the same unit. You can't find the same washer, dryer, refrigerator, freezer. You can't find the same units in all these different stores and shop compare. You can't because Whirlpool makes exclusive deals with their real retailers, resellers. And so uh, uh, Home Depot was offering a washer dryer set for $1,000, where it costs 100 bucks to make it. And Whirlpool is selling it to Home, Home Depot for $400. And uh, uh, Home Depot's making a killing. Uh, Whirlpool's making a killing. You're paying full retail for something that costs 10 cents on the dollar to make, just like this. Because this should be $99.99, but it's not. It's $1,199. And around and around we go, and that's the same with uh, ceiling fans, lighting fixtures, plumbing, your new sink uh, in the kitchen with the new faucets, that's made in China. That's made overseas, it's not made in America. Can't be made in America. We can't produce it in North America for the prices that we can get it produced at elsewhere. Made in India, Pakistan, Taiwan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, uh, on and on the countries go. It's a race to the bottom for manufacturing. And so, um, uh, you know, the, the, the spurring of business continues. The question now is, well, what business are we spurring on? <laughs> uh, in Europe, it's incredible. They make cars in Germany and export them around the world and they still sell. How is that possible? Germany has one of the highest standards of living in the Western world. Factory workers that work at Volkswagen in Germany or at Mercedes or... Uh, at the Audi plants, uh, they, they are well paid. They have six week paid vacations every year under federal law. This isn't like a company perk. This is standard issue. 
the pensions are so generous that a 40 year employee of Volkswagen at age 55, 60, they're retired in full, with full pension benefits tied to inflation. They will never go down in the standard of living. And the state gives them unbelievable tax breaks to enjoy your retirement and spend and travel and, and live your life because you have paid your way to society. The University of Education is free. It's part of the state budget. Healthcare, free. It's built in. Uh, the average German is going, uh, yeah, well, Volkswagen is well-made car. That's that's why they sell in North America. You, you, you buy a German-made Volkswagen, um, and, and you buy it in Cambodia, you buy it in Egypt, you buy it in Turkey, you buy it in uh, the UK. It's a solid car. Um, yeah, solidly made by solid employees. The government is making sure that that company succeeds with export credits and everything else doesn't work that way in North America where we're you know government hands off uh, business do their businesses do it their own way and so we have uh, we have a lot of products coming into our countries from overseas because we can't build them locally and will not pay the price to have them built locally and uh, there's this this tug of war going back and forth and back and forth to finish my point, I guess, um, can the Americans raise rates? Yeah, domestically they could. Uh, to Americans, they can raise rates, sure, which would kill their own economy. Uh, yeah, sure, if the Fed uh, wants to uh, tinker with, with buying back their own bonds and they want to lower the money supply, and, uh, yeah, the Fed can do that. But the cost to America will be dramatic. It'll be the Americans that pay the price, not Germans or Swedes or, or, or Finns or... The UK folks, uh, they're not going to pay the price for America raising rates to themselves. It'll only be the Americans paying the price uh, because it's a domestic policy. Um, Canada has always had lower interest rates than the United States or has higher interest rates. All depends on what Canada's objectives are. If our currency goes too low against the US dollar, the Bank of Canada raises rates higher than the American rates. Americans raise their rate by quarter percent. Canada raises it by three eighths of a percent. We raise our rates higher to get more dollars into our currency so that we don't lose as much on the currency. Of course, that means up here in Canada, we have a lower standard of living. We pay more in dollars to, to go about our business, um, but that's the price we have to pay because we're one-tenth the size of the American uh, economy. But right now, our rates are just as low as the American rates. My, my uh, mortgage, if I had a mortgage uh, uh, renewal that I was doing, we're looking to buy a new house, we can buy a new house with one and a half percent money. One and a half percent interest rates are common in Canada right now. This is like everyone can get that. Uh, if you have any kind of a credit score, you've been paying mortgages for years, you can renew at one and a half. Money is being handed out for free here uh, compared to inflation. But in Germany, you can sign up for a 15 year or a 20 year, 25 year amortization mortgage with a 15 year guaranteed rate lock in of zero or a quarter of a point, or one fifteen hundredths of a percentage point. We're talking money at 2% less than inflation for the next 15 years. Uh, please borrow, please come in, please, please come in and borrow this money. Yeah, well, we'd love to help finance your brand new house. Brand new house, no problem. Unbelievable, that's how aggressive Europe is right now to try to get its economy running, keep it running, keep it rolling, keep it happening, because the alternative is unthinkable. The, un the alternative is 15% unemployment. The, un the unthinkable is people who are restless with nothing to do, marching on the streets with placards, then burning placards, then burning police cars, then burning businesses, then burning buildings. Can't have that. So we're better off keeping people working, keeping people uh, productive, uh, allowing people to grow their asset base and grow their wealth rather than have the opposite effect. Um, and that's a national priority because uh, a restless population is a population that demonstrates and doesn't work very hard. Don't want to have that. Um, that's how it, how it differs between different countries. Anyway, this is just my old, my old views, uh, just me kind of ranting along here of what's going on out there, how it works, what's been happening, how I see it. Uh, right now, uh, we are coming into uh, 11 minutes to go before we start trading today. And I want to welcome all of you to the show, the chat, the channel. I hope you uh, didn't mind my rant. Uh, the Dow is up 10 points. Um, it's at 35,008. Uh, we have S&P up 1.8. And we've got the NASDAQ up 14. This is all pre-market activity. We have crude oil holding on to an 87 cent a barrel.
price improvement. Um, crude is everywhere. Um, uh, I just don't see any reason why crude would reach 70 or 80 bucks a barrel. I just don't see it. Um, and uh, if there are, if there's truly talk, if it's truly going to happen that the United States is going to think about possibly upping their interest rates by a point or so, uh, watch oil drop 25 bucks a barrel real quick down to the low 40s. Uh, that that will happen because the knee jerk reaction is fear and panic by those looking forward. Uh, at the moment, the thought of having a, a 2% bank rate in the United States with a prime rate of 4.5%, 5% is unthinkable because it would put the American consumer at such a disadvantage to the rest of the world. The rest of the world would panic with regards to the fact that the number one buyer of consumer goods could be off the market for a while because they're going to be priced out of the market with respect to their money. This would be bad news. Good news for the American dollar, in a way, because if rates were to go up in the United States, if, if the Treasury were to lift the rates, the Federal Reserve, the U.S. dollar would skyrocket in value against all other currencies. Good news and bad news. Good news for Americans who are importers. So if you want to buy a brand new BMW or a Mercedes-Benz built in, in, uh, in Germany, or you want to buy something made overseas, you might get it for cheaper money because your dollar is more valuable than it was two years ago. The bad news is if you're in the export business, and many American companies are in the export business, like Whirlpool, uh, Whirlpool's washer and dryer will now be so expensive to the outside world, they'll cancel orders. And so the, uh, the ability of the American manufacturer to sell overseas will be greatly restricted. This will cause layoffs. This will cause job losses. This will cause a slowing U.S. economy. You might bring inflation down a little bit domestically, but you're not solving the big problem. You are going to have a massive unemployment issue at a certain level of business. Now, the accountants will count fewer dollars, but they'll still be counting dollars. The factory floor worker is the one that will pay the price. Uh, the suppliers to the factory, they will pay the price with all of their employees. This will just go out like a domino effect across the entire U.S. economy, crippling the U.S. economy dramatically and putting it behind the outside world, which is being funded by central banks to the nth degree, expand, 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 while America contracts, 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 the worst possible outcome. You're going to have restless Americans with no jobs, and they're going to get bored, and they're going to start walking the streets with placards, and then they're going to start burning those placards, and then they're going to burn parked cars, and away we go into anarchy. Can't have that. Well, uh, you can't have an interest rate policy that is opposite the rest of the planet. And you cannot dictate to the rest of the planet if you're not the clear leader of the planet. And at this point, America is not the clear leader of the planet. Certain ways, America is number one, yes. But in every way economically, no, it is no longer that. It had that predominance back in the 60s and the 70s, but they lost it in the 90s and the 2000s and are still slipping to this day, unfortunately. Well, that, or fortunately, maybe, maybe it's a better thing that there's more wealth elsewhere. But uh, things have changed and they will continue to evolve. It's just the way it is. Welcome one, welcome all to the show, uh, to Uncle Bruce. Um, I hope, uh, I hope uh, my plain English is understandable. Uh, don't know if you agree with it or not, but I, I hope you're all right. Thank you all for, for being here. Appreciate that that, uh, that you're here. Um, and uh, we're going to uh, say thank you, all of you who are here um, uh, that are non-members. I appreciate that you've popped in to say hi to us. Uh, uh, we hope that uh, those of you who are non-members consider becoming members of this channel. Love to have you uh, join us. Members, um, we're, uh, one of the perks that members have is that members get to make uh, comments throughout the live show. And uh, we're going to go to members only comments right now and say thank you to the non members who've joined us so far. And please consider becoming a member and join the gang here. Uh, some of the perks you have, of course, is getting to use the emojis on our live show and commenting on our live show. And also, uh, you are in line for updates as, um, as uh, I occasionally will do uh, member alerts on new stocks that we like to follow stock updates um, and, and any kind of bulletins. And uh, again, if you're a member, you get these perks as, as part of the membership of this channel. Thank you all of you for, for being here. Appreciate it. 
and uh, welcome all of you to the show from around the world. Thank you for the 263 thumbs ups already. I uh, appreciate that. Looks like we're about six minutes away from opening the doors of this market. We're up 19 on the Dow, up 2.8 on S&P, up 17.5 on uh, NASDAQ right now. Uh, thank you, all of you. Um, stocks that we're watching at this point, let me take a look here at some of our favorites. Um, I'm looking at SoFi right now at 17.05, a 14 cents, 259,000 shares traded. Um, and we are uh, uh, waiting for financials. Second quarter financials are coming out uh, August the 12th. That's Thursday, a couple of days. Uh, SoFi will release their results and have a conference call. The shares in the last week and a half have climbed from that 14 level now to the 17 level. And we'll see how much more the stock wants to uh, climb uh, from here. Over at Robinhood, where we're, we're watching out of the corner of our eye, down 20 cents this morning to 56.63. That went public a week and a half ago. Uh, we're watching that closely as always. A GameStop, um, it closed at 161.13 last night. It's 164.19 now. We're up 306 uh, on volume of 38,000 shares. That's the latest uh, on GameStop. We're happy to see a little upward movement again. Um, let's take a look at uh, ATIP. Uh, they're coming out with, uh, they just unloaded their CEO uh, over the weekend. They, uh, they excused their chief executive officer and member of the board of directors. He's been eliminated from existence. Uh, they are now looking for a new CEO. Uh, the stock moved up yesterday, 19 cents to 457, sitting right now at 457, 458. Uh, we'll watch that closely. There's a search on right now for a new CEO. And I don't think this is going to take a long time. Uh, AMC uh, closed at 33.80 last night. Um, then the earnings came out after the bell. Mixed results. Um, the stock is showing a gain right now, 36.93 up 313, uh, but is not taking off by 10 or 15 dollars. It has traded 5.5 million this morning, which is good volume. But um, uh, AMC. Um, uh, on the one hand, are showing um, better results because they're not losing as much per share. Uh, their revenues have climbed because their theaters are reopening in the U.S. for now, uh, but they're still losing money. And this is the, uh, the million or maybe multi-billion dollar question. The question on everyone's mind is, if they are able to generate $500 million every three months or more of gross revenue, which is $2 billion dollars a year. Um, can they make profits generating $2 billion a year in revenue? And at the moment, it, the answer is no. And this is, uh, this is a, a disturbing problem because uh, what will it take? How much money does it have to be that come in the front door for the company to make a profit at the end of the day? Um, we don't know the answer to that question. I don't know if anyone has even been able to figure that out yet. I don't know if there's any analyst that knows. But uh, 440 million of revenue came, coming in for the latest quarter was not enough to uh, eliminate a $300 million loss. Uh, now, I can understand there are some one-off expenses and, and uh, you know, write-offs and stuff like that, but I wonder if, if, if this coming quarter coming up, if they're gonna be able to do 500 million in gross sales, can, this, can the losses be less than 200 million or less than 150 million? Can we begin to see a dramatic shift where there's a line that once you cross a dollar amount coming in, that after that amount, every dollar coming in turns into 30 cents of profit for the company. And we figure, okay, if they generate another 200 million, that's 60 million in net profit perhaps against the 100 million loss, they are you know awfully close. Uh, but at the end of the day, the the, the one expense that is climbing on this company that they, they there's no way to avoid it is the increased expenses of interest on their debt. Um, this has dramatically risen and um, it, it, it is now a, a huge, uh, might be a billion dollar a year problem uh, with regard to how much interest they're paying to the debt that they've taken on. And the fact also not to forget Right at, as I speak to you right now, the the uh, indications are that the shares outstanding are now at 513 million shares. That's how many are out there. It used to be 107 million. It's now 513 million. So there's almost five times as much stock outstanding that there used to be, and they have maxed out. 
I think they can't go beyond 525 million. That's the total maximum allowable. Um, if they cannot raise that number by a couple of hundred million and sell another couple of hundred million shares at, at 35, 40 bucks a share, they will not be able to pay off um, or pay down their debt in any significant way. They need to reduce their debt by at least half. It's right now at about $5.4 billion is what they're carrying in debt right now. And they're paying interest on this. This is, uh, this is uh, un, un, untenable. You cannot, you cannot do this over for the next 10 years. You have to eliminate this. This has to be eliminated. And there's only one way to eliminate it. Well, there's two ways. You either bring in $5 billion a year in revenue, which they've never done, or you bring in, um, you bring in fresh cash that doesn't cost you any interest. The only way you can do that is issue stock. And right now they're forbidden to do that. So they're, they're in a catch 22 at this moment in time. Matterport uh, closed at 1551 last night, uh, sitting at 1551 this morning. We're just opening for trading right now. We're gonna follow this market right from the get go to see how we're opening this morning. And let's see what we're all about here. Uh, we've got some stocks to cover here. We've got news to cover. Uh, at the moment, I am showing um, uh, the Dow up 11 points on the opening. Um, we've got uh, S and P up three, and we have Nasdaq up 28. So at the moment, that's what I'm showing on the on the more on the boards. Uh, I've got um, I've got uh, Robinhood at 56.96 right now. We've got uh, we've got uh, SoFi at 16.93 up two cents. We've got GameStop at 162.52 up a dollar 39. ATIP uh, down six cents to 450. AMC up three bucks, 317, 36.97. We have Matterport up two cents to 15.53. 23 and Me up 34 cents to 9.30. Fifth Wall down four cents to 12.51. Vector up six to 10.42. Navsite down a dime right now. I'm not sure if that's accurate. It might be accurate. 9.88 at the moment. Um, we've got um, uh, Sextera up 12 cents to 8.62. News on some of our stocks that we're following. 23andMe will release financials on Friday of this week, August 13th. Uh, 23andMe um, will be uh, letting the world know how they're doing. Their shares right now, they're up to 925, 930 on 100,000 shares. They've been improving the last couple of days. Over at, um, at uh, Fifth Wall Acquisition, FWAA, uh, they're having a shareholder meeting on August the 23rd to vend into or be acquired by Smart Rent. The stock is at 12.50 right now. The all-time high is about 12.90. Matterport, second quarter financials come out on Wednesday. That's tomorrow. Uh, there'll be a conference call tomorrow after that. And then on uh, Thursday, they will be, Matterport management will be at the Canaccord Genuity Growth Conference, annual growth conference uh, to promote the company and, and everything else about them. So Matterport is busy. They're up 12 cents right now. It's uh, 1563 on 20,000 volume. Tomorrow is the day for financials on Matterport. VACQ, um, that is um, a vector acquisition. Their meeting is August the 20th. That's in 10 days to become Rocket Lab. We're waiting for that deal. Uh, VACQ right now at 1040, up four cents. Over on uh, on NAVSite, uh, uh, Na yeah, NAVSite, August the 13th, that is the, that's in three days, they have their merger date set for Spire Global. And so NSH is going to become Spire Global, but at the moment, as I'm sitting here, it is looking at, at a 982 quote right now, down 16 cents on 36,000 shares. I wonder what the heck's going on there. I can't tell you. I have no idea what the deal is on that stock today. I'll let you know when I see more. ATIP uh, just talked about the how, the fact that they got rid of their, their CEO. Uh, that's a good move. Uh, they're bringing in new blood. That's a good move. Uh, obviously, the powers that be that own most of this company are not happy with who's running the show. They've made changes. I suspect there could be more. We're still sitting at right now 448 to 449 a share. We're down about $0.08. Cents. But look for, look for higher prices because... These guys are not happy down here. I can tell you that. SoFi, as I said, uh, coming out with their earnings uh, tomorrow, uh, day after tomorrow, excuse me. Their earnings come out day after tomorrow. So there you have it. We're at 16.98 on SoFi, up seven cents. We're up 110 on Robinhood. Uh, GameStop up $1.66 to 162.79. AMC up 220 to $36. It's not taking off uh, like maybe shareholders had hoped. 
It's only traded 10 million shares here in the opening. There isn't like 30, 40 million shares of pent-up buying here. Um, I kind of wonder if AMC is going to slump from here because the numbers were better, but they're still god awful. Uh, Matterport up 11, 15, 62, 23 and me now up 29 cents to 9.25. Fifth wall down four cents. Vector up a nickel. Navsite down 21 cents. Sextera up 31 cents now. Sextera 8.81, recovering yesterday's loss on 3,600 shares. Absolutely nothing. Th these guys are doing show and tells. Sextera, they're doing two show and tells this week. Uh, I think starting either today or tomorrow, uh, they're already promoting them, their, 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 their company going forward. So hopefully that'll have an effect. IBM right now is down 21 cents to break all our hearts. The Dow is up 16 points. Microsoft is up a dime. Apple's up 38 cents. Tesla down 385. It's a real quiet day. Bed, <clears throat> Bed Bath & Beyond up 60 cents. Blackberry up three. Royal Caribbean up 92 cents to 78.31. Norwegian Carnivore are both up about 45 cents each. Um, Amazon is up 66 cents. Nothing happening there, uh, to say the least. Facebook is up 39. Google up four dollars. Uh, J.P. Morgan up 24 cents. Goldman Sachs up a buck 66 to 401. This stock is headed to 700 a share, and that might be done by next year. Uh, Goldman right now is trading at 7.3 times earnings. When I started recommending this stock aggressively, that was about a month ago. Uh, we were down as low as the 350 mark, uh, 370 mark. It is now 401. It is going to 700 a share. And you can pick off $400 contracts, 405s, 410s. You pick off 390s, 395s in the money contracts. Buy them out from like from a year from now. Enjoy the ride. Uh, you're going to make a ton of money if you pick this stuff up. These guys are making nothing but cash. Higher interest rates, good for Goldman Sachs. I mean, really good for Goldman Sachs. Uh, again, um, it is what it is. Uh, that's the story as I can see it. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Intel up 26 cents and Micron down $1.90 right now. And that is the latest. We're showing a 20-point gain on the Dow. We're showing an SP up 2, NASDAQ up. 15 uh, at this moment. Oil up 81 cents right now. AMC 35.94 up uh, two dollars 18 cents. Um, got as high as 37.16 and then ran out of ran out of energy. Uh, now sitting around 36 bucks a share. What, what's it going to do? I, I I really wonder. I, I don't know what the catalyst is to want to buy more. Uh, the company can't issue stock from its treasury to raise cash to pay down the debt. So they're in a catch 22. They're doing 400 million in three months, so it's 150 million a month in sales, five million a day. They're doing five million a day at the box office right now. How much do they have to generate? 10 million a day, 12 million a day. What's the number to break out from a loss? What will it take? How can they pay off 5.3 billion in debt? At five million a day, they can't do it. That's it's not enough money coming in the door. Um, it's 1.8 billion a year in sales, and you're losing. Uh, Two or three billion a year. I mean, you just can't sustain this. I don't know how this is going to work. Um, all right, uh, Robinhood up sixty-seven cents. SoFi now down two cents to sixteen eighty-nine. GameStop up a buck ninety-five to one sixty-three oh eight. ATIP at four fifty-two, only down a nickel now. AMC up two fourteen to thirty-five ninety-four. Matterport up four cents to fifteen fifty-five. Twenty-three and Me at nine twenty-four up twenty-seven cents. Fifth wall down a quarter. A vector up 21. Navsite down 20 to 9.78. Sextera up 21 cents to 8.71. Nav Navsite has their meeting in two days. Uh, so um, uh, why the stock is down at this moment, I can only imagine there's either a shorter out there who's taking a run at this thing, trying to make it look bad, or uh, maybe someone is is shorting the stock. Uh, to drop it in price, scoop it up cheap, and offer it to the company at 10 bucks a share and not take the deal. This could be a kind of a shenanigan game going on. I, again, I'm just, I'm, I'm throwing my hands up going, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know what's happening. 64,000 traded, this is zero volume here. Uh, we're now at 978. Um, I, I, I really wonder just what the deal is. Uh, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll follow it as best we can uh we'll just we'll just 
you know, we'll see what they're going to do. SoFi, 16.82, down 9 cents. Low of the day, 16.80, high of 17.08. A volume on SoFi this morning now is showing um, 1 million shares. So it's okay, but it's not like incredible. It had a good start, and it's been shot down. It is absolutely being hit heavily right now by sell orders. So SoFi right now is taking a shot lower. Um, let's see, is anyone else going down? We got ATIP almost even now on the day. And um, a Matterport 1554, same thing. It got up to 16, 1566, now being hit with sell orders, uh, backing off quickly. Um, NAV site, as I said, is being hit. Um, and uh, let's see, a vector uh, acquisition was as high as 1069, now 1049, lost 20 cents in two minutes, getting hit right here on the opening, right now, getting nailed. Uh, so certain stocks are, co are coming into a bit of a sell wall right now. Don't know why, don't know who. Um, is it the same individuals, the same group of individuals? Maybe, uh, maybe short, uh, short hedge, hedge funds shorting. I don't know. SoFi now down 23 cents to 1670, absolutely getting hammered right now, ruthlessly. It's just being sold, heavily sold. 1.2 million traded now on SoFi. We're down 21 cents to 1670 a share, just getting chopped, um, by whomever, for whatever reason, uh, announcements do in the next couple of days. Um, so. That's what I'm seeing right now. Um, ATIP 453 down four cents. Uh, AMC holding on to a 270 gain right now, 36.52. Matterport still showing a nine cent gain, um, backed off a bit. Now it's only showing a three cent gain, 15.54 down, 12 cents in the last five minutes. Um, fifth wall acquisition definitely getting a shot down. It opened at 12.51 now at 12.31 down 20 cents all in the last two minutes. Uh, definitely coming into some selling selling pressure right there. NAF site still at 976, low of the day 974. It's trying to bounce back off the low, but only 65,000 traded at the moment. Uh, it's not taking much uh, to to mess with these stocks this morning, as I, as I can see. We're up 37 on the Dow. We're up four on S&P. We're up 16 on Nasdaq at the moment. Oil down is up to 87 cents. Anyway, there you go, folks. Uh, look at the dip on SoFi. It says. Uh, Says cloak. Yep, not 1674 now, down 16 cents. Got as low as 1665. It's bounced back nine cents. Uh, 1.3 million uh, uh, shares traded. Um, Kev is saying, hey, give us a bounce off of 1660. Um, let's see. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, hey, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Good morning, everybody. Hi, John. How you doing? Um, welcome all. Uh, to the show and uh, thank you for for hanging around. Let's see what's going on here. 1675 now. SoFi up a dime from the low of the day. Uh, still down 16 cents. Um, GameStop 163.11, holding a 198 gain. ATIP down four cents, and uh, AMC up a buck 91. Uh, Matterport at 1560 after dropping to 1545. It's bounced back right now. Uh, fifth Wall still showing 1231, up four cents from the low of the day here. Still down 24. Uh, vector acquisition 1055 that's coming back from 1036 it just jumped 19 cents from this morning's low so this is interesting how this is reacting NAF site I'm still showing 975 on 67,000 the low of 974 at the moment uh, that's what I've got on, on that one six there up 22 cents 872 um, the low was 856 on the opening got up to 881 it's now 872 on 12 thousand shares that's it twelve thousand shares ibm down 16 cents to break our hearts okay all righty there's where we're at guys uh, uh sometimes some it's easier to see what's going on than other days um uh, that's what we have anyway thank you um let's see uh, uh let's go yeah, here at Wall Street Journal yesterday, AMC has had low attendance. Second COVID also affected ticket sales. Um, and uh, let's go. Uh, let's go. Uh, come on, ME. What's the problem? Why the face is Dave laughing out loud? Uh, ME 918 up 22, still holding a gain here. We got up to 939. That was the start of the day. Um, we're now at 920 on 174,000 shares on 23 and me this point um so fighting 1676 down uh, 15 cents 
at the moment, uh, volume uh, over a million. Uh, ATIP down four, AMC up a buck and a half, Matterport 1561, 23 and me up 24 cents. There you go. That's our our early morning uh, uh, activity here as we are trying to figure out what what is uh, happening out there uh, in the marketplace. Uh, okay, let's see here. Matterport 1561. Let's take a look at the Dow 30. What's going on with the Dow? Uh, let's go here to here and uh, let's grab the Dow 30 and figure out who is doing what uh, on the Dow right now. The, the losers are about eight losers. The worst would be Amgen down a buck 79. It's only 0.7%. Uh, American Express down a buck and a half. Visa down a buck 15. United Healthcare down a dollar. Walt Disney down 63 cents. McDonald's down 45. IBM down 23 cents. JP Morgan down 18. Looks like Boeing down five and Merrick down three cents. Those are your losers. Your winners, your biggest winner, Walmart up a dollar 74. 3M is up 138. Uh, uh, Goldman is up a dollar 38. Salesforce up a dollar eight. Apple up 94 cents. Chevron up 90 cents. Caterpillar up 73. Nike up 72. So. It's it's uh, not nothing violent happening on the Dow. It's nothing like really crazy. It's just uh, uh, right now it's a quiet opening. Set twenty seven point gain on the Dow. Uh, not a lot to get uh, you know riled up about. Four point gain on S and P and a sixteen point gain on Nasdaq. That's uh, that's all we're seeing right now. Uh, so far, still down thirty cents to sixteen sixty one. We were uh, this morning at seventeen oh eight. In the pre-market, we're at 1710 to 1720 a share all morning. We've traded 1.7 million. We're getting hit here with sell orders. It dropped it to 1658 uh, just a moment ago. We're now at 1664 uh, on SoFi on 1.7 million shares. I don't have any news to tell you. There are financials coming out on SoFi um, the 12th, day after tomorrow. Uh, the company will start talking day after tomorrow. Um, what I got here. Uh, well, okay. GameStop 162.97 up a buck 84. The high 164.07. The low 161.27. That's been the range on uh, GameStop. Uh, so we're up just a bit. And 23andMe right now showing a 9.14 up 18 cents. Got as high as 9.39. The low was just set a few moments ago at 9.12. And we're still down in this neighborhood uh, at the moment. Uh, ATIP down eight cents, uh, Matterport up a nickel, uh, SoFi down a quarter at 1666, 1668, low of 1658. We've come back a dime from the low of the day on SoFi. We're now at 1670, recovered 12 cents of the loss right at this moment in time. That's that's what we have on SoFi right at the moment. Uh, the Dow up still still at 20. S&P up four and Nasdaq up 20 points. All right, there you are, guys. Uh, there's your opening and plain English. Uh, doing what I can. Uh, Chew dog, uh, Uncle Bruce. I read last night that IBM's upcoming split is going to create a new company. So to become IBM and the new company, this is good for us. Um, well, I'm going to say yes uh, for anyone who's an IBM shareholder. At the end of the day, this is a good move because the company wants to split into two divisions. I think one is a very solid uh, cash generating, dividend generating machine, uh, which is what IBM has been known for. And then the second company, I think, is the quick growing, uh, capital appreciating, uh, exploding company, which is the iCloud division um so you'll end up with probably i'm going to assume i'm just going to assume that you're going to end up with every ibm share you're going to end up with an ibm share and a and a is a kendra share um you'll have one of each but it could be different it might be that you end up with uh two ibm and one kendra or three ibm and two kendra i don't know how this is going to go down i honestly don't know how this is going to split out uh, if they did do like a three and a two, you know, you've got three of one and two of the other, then of course the IBM stock might trade for like $30 a share, multiply by three, that's $90. And then the other two might be 35 each, 
and that's seventy dollars. Combine the two is one hundred sixty dollars. That might be the deal. Now, I wouldn't mind a deal like this because it gives all of you leverage. It gives you much more stock than what you'd have now. What I don't know is if you're an option holder, if you own stock options in IBM, I don't know how this is going to split out. Um, because if the company, oh, excuse me, if the company dividend, dividends out or splits out stock, and you have one call contract on IBM long term, what happens to your IBM contract if there is now three IBM shares for every single IBM share that used to be? Do you have three contracts with IBM now instead of one? And what about the other stock that's been created? Will you end up with two contracts in the other stock that's trading at whatever price that's trading? In other words, a five for one split, right? It, would that would that happen? If it's just a one for one, um, you would have your one IBM contract like before, but would you now have a contract that you would own in the second company at a set at a set value? all split related and figured out I, you know I, i've never been through this I, I don't know how this is gonna go i i'm uh i'm obviously very curious uh, i can't wait to find out the details but I, i'm totally guessing what the heck's gonna happen here i if i could tell you i would right now but i wish i could um anyway that's what i'm what's what i'm seeing right now uh, would you consider an early bagel bruce we need this thing to go up uh, <laughs> uh now, I own AMC. Don't be surprised if AMC is buying its own uh, tickets online to prop up the numbers. They call it priming the pump. I don't know. Uh, 36.29 on AMC right now, up 249. So it's trying to hang around here. Hey, SoFi is not Friday. You're going the wrong way. SoFi, 16.73 now, down 18 cents. The low of the day, 16.58. So it's a bit better, but uh, not great. Uncle Bruce, regarding your SPAC variables, I think you may be interested in the Black Sky Deal Merger Ticker SFTW backed by Thiel. Um, haven't had anything, any time to look at the other deals, but we'll keep an eye. Bill, uh, here you go, Uncle B. Uh, thank you. Michael, uh, that's what I'm wondering about my IBM calls, too. I, I hear you. I smell money. I'll let you guys know how it goes. IBM 145 call expiring February premium of $9. That, that's a sign, uh, a good sign. If a premium is that high on IBM, it's a stock trading at 140 a share. The premiums on Febs are nine dollars. That's a good sign. That that that's telling me that the the smart money or, or some somebody's money out there is thinking a big move is coming on IBM. Now it might be the best buy might be just to buy some stock, whether you can buy one share, ten shares, twenty shares, this fifty, whatever. That might be a way to go. Another way to play this game is to buy long call options. That might might be. Again, might be a way to go where you buy in the money calls for next February, March, April, but that are like $30, $40 in the money. They might be very close to the actual price of the stock instead of a lot of premium on it. Uh, but again, I don't know how the splits will work with regards to option players. This, I don't know. I guess I can say this. If you own an in the money call option on IBM, let's say you've got a, $100 call option. I'm just, I'm making this up. I'm not looking at any quotes. You have a $100 call option on IBM and you're buying it right now for $44, let's say. Again, I'm making that number up too. Uh, you have the right to buy 100 shares at $100 a share from the seller of that contract. So if the deal comes out and it says you're getting two IBM shares and one Kindle share or whatever it is, Kendra share, you might exercise your call option and say, okay, I'm buying this uh, stock for $100 a share. I'll find the money because I'm being handed now two shares of IBM and a share of Kendra, and that combined is $170 in value. I, I, I got a $100 option here. Now, on the other hand, it could be that the announcement is made that you're going to get two of these and one of those, and that's $170 value, or you're going to get three IBM, two Kendra, and that's $170. Again, I'm making this up, all right? But the reality is that the $170 combined value of the new IBM thing versus your $100 contract puts your contract $70 in the money. So IBM stock will trade now at $170 a share waiting for the split date to take place. 
If you're an option holder, whether it's an in-the-money contract, out-of-the-money contract, whatever of the contract, you have the right to either exercise your option to get the stock or sell your contract into the market at what it's trading for. And if the perceived value of the stock is $170 because of this future split, once they announce it, the, the, the options will reflect a $170 stock price, plus premium perhaps, perhaps. Depends how long your contract has to live. So if you've got a, a, an in-the-money $100 contract, you paid $43 for it, but the perception is that its value is $70 book value, and there might be a $5 premium value on top of that still, it might trade at $75 a contract. You paid $43 or $44 or $45 for it, um, way to go, a nice return, right? You could also, in theory, buy that contract and then write short-term call contracts against that put as a poor man's covered call to try to generate quick money every Friday You know, as this goes on. But you're playing with fire because on the one hand, you're long 100 shares with one contract, but if you write a covered, a covered call or a call against this call, you're now negative on this under you're short on this one so now you've negated your upside over a certain level you have to be careful of this I, again I, you may want to just buy in the money calls you may want to look at IBM in such a way that you pick up uh, uh, as many as you can get as close to the at the money price that you can get again long term calls is what I'm talking about so let's say February 2022, as I, I just I'm throwing this as a, I'm now looking at an option chain. Um, February the 18th, um, the $100 call right now is 4105 to 4270. You probably get it. Let's say you can get it at. Let's say you can buy it at 42 bucks, just somewhere in the middle. Well, you're paying 42 dollars for a stock worth 14109. So that's 100 plus the 42 dollars. It's 142 bucks combined value between the book value, the, the, the actual trading value of the contract and its exercise price versus the market price of 141. Now, if you were to buy a 145 contract right now, uh, it would run you 675. If you were to buy a $140 contract, it's only a dollar and nine cents in the money. It is nine bucks a contract. That's eight bucks premium. So if you can buy the 100 at 42, not a bad deal. The 110 is above 32, 33. That's also a good deal. Uh, the 120 is uh, going to run you about $23. So you're paying 143 for a 141. Well, if you can buy, if you can afford to buy the $22 call versus the $40 call, yeah, uh, then then for two grand or $2,300, you're controlling 100 shares of IBM. The 130s are about $15, so that's $145. Now you're starting to pay a premium. You're paying $4 over the value of the stock. So the 120s might be as far as you go, uh, around $23. The 110s are about $32. That we're bringing in at $142. So if you've got ten grand lying around and you can afford to buy three $120 IBM contracts um, uh, at one, the 110s, you could pick up three hundred and ten dollar calls at around thirty two dollars a piece. That's ninety six hundred bucks ballpark, just under ten thousand bucks. You now are in control of three hundred shares of IBM. If the shares are valued out at one hundred seventy bucks once this announcement is made and it's all clarified as how this split is going to happen, if the net result by say October of this year, this deal comes to you at about one hundred seventy. Well, these one tens will be worth sixty to sixty-two bucks each. You got three of them. You got eighteen, nineteen grand worth of contracts that you paid ninety-six hundred for. So there you go. There's a nice return between now and October on a very conservative company. There you have it. Now that's how I would perceive it. Now you could theoretically buy hundred fifty dollar call contracts. Uh, right now, these 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 February contracts would run you about four seventy-five each, maybe. And it's true, they would have a book value of 20 bucks at 170 a share. Sure, they'd have a book value 20. So that's four times your money or three and a half times your money. Yeah. But um, you have to be dead right that 170 is the number. If the number is really only more like 155, 
the one tens are, are going to be worth then 55 a share, 57 a piece each, and you just pay 32 or 33 each. You've made a nice dollar on this, a really good return. Where the 150s uh, that you bought are only worth five bucks book. They might only be trading at seven dollars, and you made a couple of dollars, but boy, you risk a lot to get it. You might you might be well well off, much well better off grabbing the one tens. There's there's my thought. Now another th way to play this is to write a put. So if you want to write a put contract on IBM, and again you're going out to do it, you could theoretically uh, write uh, say uh, a 140 put, which is one dollar out of the money. Uh, you could be paid about 9.75. A share on that. So you're literally paying about 131 for IBM stock. You could write 135s and get about 750. So you're now paying 127.50. Or you could write 130s and receive about 550. You're paying 124.50 net net. If you wrote 125s, you get about four dollars. You're paying 121. And if you wrote 120s, you'd receive about three dollars a share. Not a lot of premium, and you're on the hook for seven uh, 117. The problem with these deals uh, is your upside is limited only to the premium you receive. You can't make any more than that. So if you wrote the 140 and the stock goes to 150, 60, 170, the 140 will expire worthless. You'll score 975, 10 bucks a contract, but you're not going to score 30 or 40 dollars a contract because the 140 put will be worth zip. You're not on the hook for any of that money. Uh, whereas if you got the call contract, you bought the call at 140, that the call would run you right now 875. At 170, it's a $30 contract. You've made four times your money, much more than on that put. But the put strategy is a conservative strategy. It's a very conservative strategy. And uh, if you have a margin account, uh, you can probably write a put contract for not a lot of dough. Uh, compared to the value of the stock, if it's a cash account, you're gonna have to put up all 100 and uh, all 14 grand to, to, to cover a $140 put contract. If you got a margin account, you might only have to put up about five thousand dollars instead of 14,000. So, in effect, for 14, 15 grand, you can write three put contracts and bring in a, almost a thousand a piece, which is three thousand bucks. That's between now and February. Now, you don't have to wait till February to score this deal. If the shares go up in value because of the announcement of the breakup and the split, and, you know, and it runs the market to 155 to 160, these contracts will go right down to two, two bucks, 225, 250 a piece. You'll score 750 a contract times three, 750 times three, 2250 dollars on a conservative option strategy. Yeah, you can always do that. You could write an in the money put. You could write a 150 saying, I'm prepared to write a 150 put. You'll bring in $16 a share. You're on the hook to buy this stuff for 134. On an option, on a margin account, you might need five, 6,000 of margin, but you've got 1,600 per contract up front in your hand to, to buy this stock at 150 bucks a share. If it goes to 155.60, this contract technically is worthless. You keep all 15, 16 dollars. Likely you'll buy that you'll buy it back for four bucks or something like that. Likely by the you won't wait till February. You'll score a nice ten twelve dollar gain, but you can get again if that's what you want. Great, There's nothing wrong with that deal. If you can do three of them, twelve bucks a piece, thirty six hundred dollar gain. It's a conservative strategy. Again, gambling that the split will be perceived by the street as a good thing, as a positive deal, as a deal that the market will like. That is what we're, we're dealing with here. So let's see how that goes. Uh, a couple of things to think about. Uh, lots of strategies here available for you on this market. Right now, the stock is 140.92, down 33 cents. This is a bargain of bargains. This IBM is a bargain stock. If you own it, you hang on to it. Uh, I think you're going to be very well looked after on this split. I think you're going to like it. I, I think the market will love this deal. I think the the uh, top management of IBM are not interested in pulling off a split where the stock is worth less money when it's all said and done. That's not what they're after. They're looking for shareholder returns. They're looking to give you returns. Their shareholders themselves, all the employees of IBM are shareholders of the company, big time. The employees own a lot of the stock over decades of vesting and putting in their employee contributions. 
this company is held heavily by its own employees. So I think they're looking for a deal that will take the stock to 170 and ultimately 200 share. Not in three months, but one never knows how the market will react to a, to a proposed split. The market is so hungry for, for upside and, and capital gains that as soon as IBM announces whatever they announce, there could be a move here. So let's see how this plays out. By the way, cheers, everybody, from around the world to uh, hanging out with Uncle Bruce here today. I hope I'm not boring you today with my uh, ranting and raving and speculating. Hope you're finding some of this interesting today. Uh, the Dow is up 80 points. We've had a nice little pop up now, a couple of these. We're up 8.5 on the S&P, and we're up 9.7 on NASDAQ. So I'm very pleased to see that. IBM is still down 26 cents, breaking our hearts. I mean, I really... The Dow's record is 35,246. We're at 35,161. We're 80 points behind the all-time high of the Dow. That's all it is. So we could set that today. Easily we could set that. Sextera up 34 cents now at 884. I'm happy to see that. Uh, that is still not recovering where we were a couple of days ago when we were over 9. So uh, we're coming back to that level, but we're still behind on 34,000 shares. Vanek, uh, vector acquisition, excuse me, up 23 cents to 10.58. Uh, fifth wall is uh, showing a 12 cent loss. Navsite, that's what I wanted to look for. Navsite is right now uh, low of the day, 961. It's now 968, down 30 cents on 100,000 shares. So they are not doing well. Uh, they are per, they are uh, appearing. Uh, at the Canaccord Genuity 41st Annual Growth Conference. They are appearing there, management. Uh, that is, uh, that, that is uh, um, um, uh, tomorrow, August, uh, tomorrow. They're there tomorrow. Uh, so I'm surprised to see the stock down like it is right now. Um, really, really upset about it. Nothing I can do about it, but it's, uh, it's down to 968. Um, why it, it took a shot? It took a shot this morning in the first 10 minutes. Then it came back a little bit to the 980 range, and it's taken a second shot to 961. So something's up. I don't know what this is. Is it discontent with the deal? Is it, uh, is, are there a couple of million shares lying around that are being uh, offered back to the treasury of the company? or being planned to being offered? And is there a, a, an orchestrated uh, attempt by hedge funds who are perhaps, now I'm thinking about this in my head here, I'm wondering, are they long a lot of stock at, at, um, on this deal? And let me think about this. They're long stock and they know they can get 10 bucks for it or they're short stock uh, I'm trying to figure out how can they make money on this deal. I, I can see where if you're a uh, you're a manipulator of the market, you would offer stock right now for sale. Short you short it, and you would short this thing down relentlessly down, and uh, get this thing down to 960, and then you'd be buying up whatever stock came in, knowing that as soon as you recover what you sold. Say you sold a bunch at 990 and 985 and 980 and 970, and now you've got it down to 960 something. And you're now buying up stock between 961 and 975, and then you're going to hit it again to drop it to 950 and try to buy back to 9. Can you actually go net long? Can you get, say, 100,000 shares in your hand as a holder of the stock uh, and then vote to take the deal, take them, take the 10 bucks back? Uh, I'm wondering if the, the cutoff date has been done. Like the, if this deal happens in three days, I'm wondering if the voting is already in. Have have these guys uh, voted to deliver um, a million shares to the company at ten bucks a share, and they've been trying to buy it for less than ten bucks a share to deliver the stock? In other words, they short they're shorting the stock. No, they can't. They can't short what they don't have. This is where I'm trying to. I'm having a tough time figuring this out. If you, you cannot sell stock to the company unless you own it. You have to be a shareholder of record to be able to issue the stock back to the company at 10 bucks a share. You had to be a shareholder of record. So this would have been a month ago or further, okay? A month ago, we were at 10, we were sitting at 10 bucks. We've been sitting at $9.95 to $10 now for months on this deal. Um 
back in February, it was at 11-ish, 10.50, 10.60. But as of about, let's say, you know, April 14th, it was 9.99, 9.99 on April the 8th. It was as low as 9.90 on May the 5th, 9.89 on May the 20th, 9.95 on June 1, 9.94 June 15, 9.99 June 25. I mean, it's been around this $9.95 to $10 range for months until today when it's taken this shot down. So I kind of wonder, um, has a market maker basically been making the market at $9.95, $9.96, $9.97, $9.98, and they bought and bought and bought and bought and bought stock? They're sitting on 5 million shares or 2 million shares or, or whatever the number is. And they've now pulled their buy orders completely out. Um, they've notified the company we we have two million shares, and they're they're sitting there at nine ninety seven average, and they're offering it to the treasury at ten bucks a share to take the money off. Uh, and they're not going to buy anymore now. They're they I've done all the buying I'm going to do. I have no need to buy anymore. I'm just going to take my ten dollars off the table and say thank you very much. Uh, and I'll make my three, four cents profit on this whole thing, and I'll walk away with sixty, eighty thousand bucks. You're on your own. Is that's what is that what's happening right now? Um, I wouldn't be happy about it, but I wonder if that is it. I'm trying to find an explanation. Why is the stock at nine sixty seven on NAV site, NAV site two days before their merger? The mer three days before the merger. It's the tenth of August. This is the thirteenth coming up in three days. Why is the stock sitting at nine sixty seven? And will it stay here much longer? I don't understand. 100,000 traded today. It's not like there's 5 million coming in for sale. It's 100,000. I'm, I'm a bit confused. Uh, maybe I'm just old. A vector down is up 18 cents, 10.54. A fifth wall now only down 8 cents. It was as low as 12.27. It's now 12.47. 23 and me at 9.05 got as low as 9.04. We're at the low of the day. Matterport up 38 cents to 15.89. We got as low as 15.45 right on the opening. Right on the opening, we're now up 38 to 1589 on 200,000 shares on Matterport. It's definitely moving the right direction. AMC up 230 to 3610. ATIP, now it's down a quarter. Here we go. It too just took a dump in the last 20 minutes. It was sitting around 460, 455, something like that. Now at 431 a share on 299,000. It definitely came in with a sell wave here. What's going on and why? GameStop up four dollars to one sixty five. SoFi down twenty four cents, sixteen sixty seven. Low of the day, sixteen fifty eight, and we we hit it this morning. The low came back, got up to sixteen eighty one, back now to sixteen sixty seven. So still under pressure. Robinhood down a dollar eighty three to fifty five bucks a share. So got all kinds of stuff going on here. I'm not sure how to uh, how to read it all. Doing what I can. Um, thank you guys. Uh, premium of nine dollars on the February. 145. Uh, well, that was what it was. The 140s are actually a premium then. All right. Um, let's go. Uh, AMC announced that they will accept, start accepting Bitcoin. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, I didn't realize IBM X dividend date was yesterday. Um, let's see. Uh, what else is going on? Just got two more SoFi $15 calls for January 22 for 420. Uh, we're now a buck 65 in the money on those. Um, let's see, um, GameStop 166, it did touch it, uh, let's say, let's see, what else, uh, uh, let's continue on, let's continue on, continue on, um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a quiet morning here, um, uh, let's see, Good morning, Uncle Bruce. Should I roll over my one hundred forty dollar um, September seventeenth call uh, for one ten uh, February eighteen due to closing to losing time premium? Okay. Um, I'm, are you first of all? You got to be talking GameStop, right? Are you, you got me confused here. Uh, you have a you have a one hundred forty dollar September seventeenth call. At one hundred ten dollars to eighty, I don't understand what's going on here. Due to losing time premium, one forty nine seventeen with the two eighteen. I don't understand what you're telling me here. 
you're 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 kind of you, you're not giving me enough info. I'm having a tough time figuring this one out. Um, let's see. Uh, is anyone experiencing holds on GameStop and ATIP? One sixty five on GameStop up three ninety nine. Um, in the high of the day, one sixty six ninety on GameStop here. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, ATIP one through four thirty three going the wrong direction. Yeah, four thirty two. Um, okay, J all right. JG is saying it's IBM. All right, well you, you left me out in the dark on that one. So good morning. Should I roll over my hundred forty dollar IBM call? Um, September seventeen for a one hundred and ten dollar call of February eighteen. That's what you're trying to do. Oh, okay, so should you? Uh, so are you're long the 140 for September and are you thinking of going long the 110 for February I hope that's what you're telling me um, I'm having a tough time figuring out yeah this is this is folks you gotta let this be a lesson to you you're, you're really getting me guessing here and I have no idea what he's asking me all right so if you're long the 140 call you sell it and you're picking up the 110. Uh, because the September is going to lose time premium, I can still cash in some value here, and I can now move over to the, you know grab the one ten. That that nothing wrong with that. There, nothing wrong with that strategy. All right, I'm with you. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I got I, that's what you're doing. I see what you're talking about. All right, that, yeah, makes sense. Uh, if you're going to do that, uh, if you can afford to make that move, it'll cost you more, obviously. Uncle Bruce, I have five Matterport $15 calls expiring on October the 15th that I bought at 170. Would you hold longer or sell and take profits with the jump today? There's there's a very good question here. 1592 now. Uh, for the week, um, hey Jen. Uh, a week ago we were down to 1429. We're now 1590. Uh, looking great. Uh, 228,000 shares. Um, the shares were as low as actually 1296. Uh, not too long ago, on July 27th. Now we're at 15.90. Got up three dollars from July. Uh, they haven't spoken yet, and they're going higher. That's a good sign. So yes, all right. So that's number one. We've established good news there. But what should you do? Um, you've got October contracts, October 15th contracts on Matterport. What do you do, and how do you do it? Let me take a look at the October 15s now. There we go. October 15s, uh, 205 to 240 is the value of these contracts. I bought them at 170, so I'm ahead now. Um, what should I be doing? Jason wants to know. Well, um, you still have until October 15th. This is August the 10th. Um, I think you still have two more weeks to relax and not do anything at this point. Let the stock keep going if that's what it's up to, because it looks like it wants to keep going. If the shares reach the $17 neighborhood, a dollar ten from here, dollar twelve from here, you got yourself two dollar book value plus premium contracts. Now, right now you've got 88 cents book value and you have a two dollar trade value, roughly. So it's a dollar ten, dollar twenty premium. Uh, if you still have a dollar premium on a two dollar book value, you're gonna have a three dollar contract you'll have made $130 for every contract you're dealing with. Um, nothing wrong with that strategy. On the other hand, you could play um, the game of selling this one and rolling into something else if you wanted to, but you don't have to at this point. Uh, this contract's going to hold some value for a while yet. Um, let me take a look at September calls. Uh, September 17 call, uh, the $15 call, is 175 to 185 So uh, a month from now, you will lose $0.30 cents in premium value. That's You're risking a penny a day in premium right now. So if you wait a week or two, you're talking about 7 to $0.15 cents of premium loss against the possibility of the shares continuing their run. I mean, another $0.40 cent gain tomorrow you're going to score about 25 more cents in premium in value gain. So uh, that's, you know, that's going your direction. If this stock wants to pop up to 1819, you're going to have a $5 contract, something like that. You're going to almost triple your money. 
that's why you bought it. And uh, you're looking at leverage, you're going to get leverage. And Matterport looks great. Um, it just looks great. Corporately, stock-wise, uh, trading pattern-wise, it's looking very good. And so I don't see the need to uh, have you drop this right now, uh, considering the fact that you have October. So you got another couple of weeks to enjoy this run. If in the next week or two it goes to 1750, 18, 1850, and it starts to top out there, well, then sell it there. Sure. Um, but give give the stock a chance to keep going higher because that's what it's doing. Um, anyway, there you go. Um, good morning, Jen, says Eddie. Hi, Jen from John. Good morning, Jen from Larry. Jen, how was your 39th birthday yesterday? Uh, Kev wants to know. Survived another one. She survived another one. Yet another 39th birthday. She survived <laughs> yet another one. How's it going, Jen? It's happening. I right, see no. you're wearing red today. I, I am defying the markets. I, I, I am defying the market. Um, but yeah, it's looking okay. We're up 156 on the Dow today. We're closing in on a new record. ATIP's getting the crap kicked out of it. Well, uh, it's down 24 cents. Uh, you know, it's it's not like the end of the world, but no. you know, sometimes it feels like it. SoFi's down 19 cents, but it's coming back up. Um, yeah. yeah. Matterport's doing well. ME's hanging in there. Had a good start, but yeah. Hmm. Mm. And six Terra um, has a thirty-two cent gain to eight eighty-two. I'm happy to see that. Right. IBM still breaking hearts with a nine cent gain. Dow uh, S&P hit uh, record intraday highs. Uh, they did. Um, the question is, will they do more? Um, didn't I see West Texas at like seventy-four cents? Um, what oil? Yeah. No, no, it's a uh, sixty-eight seventy-four. Yeah, that's it's, what I was thinking. Oh, it's actually just popped. It's up two twenty-six a gallon a barrel right now, which I'm surprised to see. Uh, the Dow at 35,268. Oh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, September. We did hit a new high. Oh, no, uh, 10 points ago, the Dow oh, hit Brent. a new high. I was looking at Brent. That's what You're looking at Brent. The Dow hit a new high 10 points ago. Yes, it just established a new all time high. And there you have it. Uh, but, you know, it, it doesn't mean everything's moving. But, yes, uh, the Dow hit a new all time high. The, the best performers on the Dow would be. Uh, Goldman Sachs up 8.95, um, Caterpillar up 2.47, Home Depot up 2.38. So there's been an explosion there. Uh, J P Morgan up two bucks, Nike up a buck 85, Boeing up a buck 80. Uh, so there's definitely movement here on some of these guys. Uh, interesting stuff. Lots happening here. I'm, I'm really trying to keep on top of a lot of stuff. For Tuesday. But I'm hungry for a bagel. I'm thinking a bagel with cheese whiz on. It's the way to go today. Whiz. That's okay. what I'm thinking. Yep. Yep. I'm thinking the old Canadian Sorry. cheese whiz, baby. Super toasted. I can do that. Okay. Do That's my last Costco bagel. My last one. Uh, yeah, we're back to the local bagels after this one. Oh, man. Um, yeah, uh, look, should I sell my AMC on this run up? The CEO is selling his, said on NBC today. Uh, where is it at? AMC 35.56, up $1.76. So uh, you got to, you know, you might want to write call options against this, buy put options. Uh, if you if you got AMC, you want to write calls on it. Maybe you want to write 45s or 50s and take some premium if you can. Uh, thanks, Uncle B. Says Jason, you're welcome, Jason. Uh, hi, Jen from Sharon. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Um, and Erica says hello and happy birthday. Uh, fantastic, everybody. Yeah, it was Jen's birthday yesterday. Uh, GameStop 164 up 287. Matterport 1587 up 35 cents. 23 me holding a one penny gain. Uh, we have some stocks having a really good day, some stocks going down today. Robinhood down two bucks now. Uh, Vector up 12. Navsite still down 30 cents to 968. The low was 961. We're now at 968 on 114,000, and they're presenting in a couple of days. I don't know what to make of this. IBM down only four cents. It is coming back to the break even line here. The low of 140.34, we're now 141.22. So IBM is definitely coming back on. The Dow's still up 153 points. Six Terra is up 31 cents to 8.82. Uh, Vanic up 12. Uh, sorry, Vector up 12. 23 Me 8.96 up one penny. Matterport 15.92 going up again. Um, and um, Hood Robin Hood down 243 to 54.40. SoFi down 26 to 16.65. GameStop up 3.28 to 164.41. Um, and it, it did reach GameStop 166.90. It did get there. 
but we are not yet uh, holding that gain. 164.41 up 320. ATIP still down a quarter at 432. The low was 427. We're a dime or a nickel better on 392,000 shares. Very quiet. Uh, Matterport 1609 just popped again. Hang on to that Matterport contract. 1609 uh, shooting up on Matterport. Looking good on 299,000 shares. Matterport moving. Very good. Very good on our Matterport. Nice to see some of our SPACs reacting. Uh, that's good stuff. 1614 on Matterport. Up another nickel. We're on our way with Matterport. All of you hang on to your Matterport. Here we go. Um, thanks, Uncle B. Hi, Jen. We Moon. Good morning, Jen, Andy, Jen, and happy birthday. Uh, thank you, everybody, for all your kind words. Uh, 1616, 1610, 1616 on Matterport. Uh, looking good. Really good. What's moving it? I don't know. Um, am I happy? Yes, I am. I'm pleased to see it. Um, it's uh, it's going to be a winner, I hope. And uh, let's keep her running. Uh, no news today. No announcements. I got nothing. So uh, it's moving up on its own here on whatever the story is. Uh, Matterport releases second quarter financials Wednesday, and they're at the Canaccord Genuity Growth Conference on uh, on uh, on the 12th, Thursday. So they're busy this week. They're talking up the stock. They're out there. Uh, same with Sextera. They're talking up the stock. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're 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 watching everything. Down 240 on Robinhood at 54.43. SoFi down now 20 cents at 16.71. That's bounced back from 16.58, so we're 13 cents better. GameStop 164.59 up 346. Uh, ATI Physical Therapy down 27 cents to 4.30. The low is 4.27. Um, AMC still holding a 182 gain. Matterport now 16.02, jumping around a lot here. 23 mean nine bucks up three cents. Fifth wall down three cents, uh, coming back to break even. Fifth wall was as low as 12.27 this morning. It is now 12.52, so it's coming on right now. Uh, Vector up 17 cents. Navsite still down 30 at 9.68, up 7 from the low, though. Still under pressure, 116,000, only one. Sextera, 8.82, up 31 cents, holding the most of its gains here on 37,000. No volume, just amazing how dead quiet it is. IBM up 18 cents. The heartbreaker is moving higher. All righty. Uh, wow, watching all of this. Matterport back to 1595 reached a high of uh, 1618. Uh, Took a shot to 1618 in a hurry. Uh, what caused it? I don't know. 1598 now. It was down to 1595. Back to 1598. Watching, watching activity. Just a lot of activity here on some of our stocks. Thank you all. Welcome to the show. Um, wow. Uh, we is Matterport happy uh, through 16. So Uncle Bruce, we should take the SoFi pre-market, getting above 17, dropping to the mid 16s as a pattern. Seems to be the case. I don't know, Papa Gamer. I wish I wish I could be more specific for you, but I can't. Uh, it just is doing what it's doing. Uh, there's the pre-market, then there's the market, and uh, sometimes the two do not match up. Uh, GameStop 164, just climbing back to 164 again, coming on. Um, you know, Uncle Bruce, Uncle Bruce, can you think of any reason why my broker wouldn't include my Cisco shares held for my margin account? All of my other stocks holdings were included. Just curious. I know. Call the broker. Yeah, my friend, it's it's got to be a technical glitch. There's something somewhere, but you got to talk to these guys and say, hey, what's up? What What's with my stock? You got to wake somebody up over there. They're handling millions of accounts. Probably that's the problem, and uh, they're just not on top of it. They just can't handle the business. GM, everyone picking up. Uh, good morning, everyone picking up on ATIP dip. Everybody noticing it? Yes, we are. We're watching that closely. 4.30, down 27 cents. SoFi dip at 16.69. Watching that closely, too. Watching the upgrade or the up move on Matterport today. Uh, we're watching the up move on GameStop today. Yeah, go, 17, go to 17. No back talk here. Ha ha, the Matterport quick fluctuations. It's something. It is. It is what it is. There's a lot of speculating going on with these uh, genuity conferences coming up. What's going to happen? Uh, Vector's still up eight cents, but it's backing off. Nafsite's still at nine sixty-six, not performing well today. Sixtera holding on to the gain, up thirty-one cents to eight eighty-two. IBM up fourteen cents. The Dow up one fifty-five. 
Um, wow. And Goldman Sachs right now up 754 to 407. That's going to 700 a share. There is where it's at, kids. Uh, yeah. Wow. What a, what a morning. We got we got all kinds of activity going on here. Just we're jumping all over the place. Uh, welcome all to the show. I'm trying to read your comments, trying to see what the market's doing, trying to watch the markets over here. Uh, Got my bagel coming. I'm a busy guy. You, uh, you know, I mean, it's happening. I mean, oh, gee, thanks, Manti Jen, so much. Appreciate this. Yeah, yeah. Keeping me going. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. The uh, the sesame seed bagel from Costco. It's our last one. Uh, Got to replace these sooner or later. Uh, cloaked. Every time I put in an options order for something, I'll be damned if it doesn't go up five above my limit price. I hate waiting. <laughs> I hear you. Connor, so I sold a couple of calls on my Matterport for seventeen fifty. Let's say I get exercised. I'm happy regardless of the profit plus premium, so I'm buying back in. Connor, if you're happy, you're happy. Uh, uh, how can you argue? Fifteen eighty five. It's going the right direction. It's backing up a little bit. These calls are already dropping. You sold them. Way to go. Way to go. The stock goes up to seventeen. You're happy. Robinhood, $54, down 284 So far, 1666 down a quarter, near the low of the day. GameStop just backed off a couple of bucks, 162.38. Little sell wave coming through. Matterport, really jumping. 1594 now. Hmm. Vector still holding a gain, but only four cents now. That was nice. I'm not quite a bit higher earlier. Nav site still at nine sixty six, down thirty one cents. Sex stare up up thirty two cents to eight eighty two. Oil's at 68.75, up 225. Can't tell you why. Don't know why oil popped. Something going on. Mm. No, I cannot. John, I can't. Nope. Way higher than this. Way higher than this. I thought we had an understanding that ATIP would go up and only go up. I thought we had an understanding. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to do. Um, someone didn't get the memo somewhere? I don't know. 53.71 on Hood. Robin Hood down 3.12. SoFi now 1658, dropping again. GameStop only up 97 cents to 162.10. Um, ATIP 422 down 35 cents. AMC up a dollar 16. Matterport 1594 up 43 cents. Trying to get those cheap, those cheap twelve fifties at thirty five cent, thirty five dollars a contract. I hear you. It's a casino, you know. You're trying to scoop them. ATIP only goes up or offers buying opportunities. There you go. Going postal so far looks to be a slow bleed play with earnings this week. What the? Why the face? <laughs> to quote Caddyshack, 
Well, we're waiting. <laughs> we are indeed, aren't we? We are waiting. 1660 on SoFi. <laughs> 421 and ATIP. Oh man, oh man. The Dow's backing up a bit. It's it's up still up 128. But um it it, it had been in run, what was it up 170, 180? So a little fluctuating there. S P up four, Nasdaq down fifty seven points now. It's funny, yesterday Nasdaq was up, everything was down. Today everything's up and Nasdaq's down. So go for it. Apple just dumped. Someone's saying, "Need uh, I need why, why the face emoji?" Um, Apple, Apple did just take a little st little spill. Well, they lost 14 cents, but in a hurry. No idea. Microsoft down a dollar. It's taking a bit of a dip, too. The Dow is still up 127 points. Amazon down 12 bucks, taking a bit of a dip through. Google down 688. So it looks like the Fang stocks are doing a little bit of a dip right now. Twitter, Netflix, Snowflake, uh, Moderna, um, Micron, all backing off quickly in in the last few minutes. For whatever reasoning, whatever the reasoning is, they're doing what they're doing. Um, so far, 1662 down 29 cents. Uh, ATIP down 37 cents. GameStop up a dollar 34. Matterport 1598 holding up there. That's what we're doing. Bruce, Bruce, you got to chew that bagel faster, man. We need help. <laughs> no idea, guy in a buffalo. I, I, I can't tell you about Ford. I, I can't help you there. You're on your own, buddy. All by yourself. More chewing that bagel to make the stocks go up, please. Uh, the whole market is selling off to get the, into the MT, into the Matterport. 16 bucks on Matterport now. Everybody wants in. <laughs> okay. All I can say about Ford is is they've got logistical problems, chip problems, um, and they want to create electric cars. You need a lot of chips, and um, Tesla's having troubles with chips, and they know what they're doing. Uh, they, they build electric cars, and that's all they do. Ford, um, you know, they're trying to ramp up into into production. Um, they're going to be spending a lot of money to set up. Sixteen oh two on Matterport. It's the shining star.
Six zero eight ninety four now up forty four cents. She's up five percent today. She's moving higher. I just see six stir coming back to nine. <laughs> we haven't seen nine since July 30th. Come on, six stir. 894. Eye of the day. NAVS like 965, low of 961 today. Not getting a lot, a lot getting excited today on this one. SoFi 1662 on our SoFi right now, low of the day 1657 down 30 cents. <clears throat> uh, so far volume today, 3.6 million so far. All right. Why, why? They're, they're doing show and tells. They're exposing their company now. They're starting to promote that stock. Sofi's like, I'm melting. What a world. Come on, Dorothy. Step in and save the day. <laughs> what up, Carter? Hi, Carter. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the show. Uh, we're trying to figure out this market. We're up 136 on the Dow. We hit a new high this morning for the all-time record high for the Dow Jones. Then we, we backed off a bit. S&P is down half a point. NASDAQ is, is down 86 points. It was up this morning. It's now negative. Uh, the, the FANG stocks are backing off. Not dramatically. They're just, you know, they're not leading today. Um, AMC was up like three, four dollars. It's now only up fifty cents, thirty-four fifty-one. AMC's losing gas here. Matterport fifteen eighty-eight just touched sixteen oh two a minute ago. Fifteen eighty-eight now. Eight ninety-one on twenty-three meat. It was just over the nine dollar mark a few moments ago. It was as high as nine thirty-nine this morning. Five hundred thousand traded on twenty-three and me. Fifth wall down three cents. Vector up a dime. Uh, bounced off the low of the day of 1036, so a little better, dime, dime better. Navsite is driving us crazy today. Navsite is down 34 cents to 964. Its its merger is in two days. It's mergerable, so there's some shenanigans going on here. Sextair on 894 now, up 44 cents. IBM still holding a gain of 16 cents. The Dow is up 132. Uh, the Dow is as high as two, uh, 35,268. It's now 35,234. So we've backed off 34 points from the high. Not like it's a disaster, but uh, um, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of jumping around. But we are so close to the all-time high. 30 points from an all-time high here. We're going higher. Uh, we will go higher. A uh, little doubt of that in my mind. Uh, but... In the meantime, we're watching stocks uh, jump around all over the place here. Um, on my front page of my stocks, the, there's only one stock that's having a good day, and that's Matterport. No one else is, is, is either higher but on the lower end of their highs, or they're just lower and quick. When was Rocket Lab going to be Rocket Lab? Um, Va uh, Vanek is going to be merging on the 20th of August. So that's 10 days from now. I think that's next week, Friday, is the is the shareholder vote to become Rocket Lab. And then probably on the Monday morning, probably going to start, start trading as RKLB. Everybody hit, hit that thumbs up button for Bruce. That would be a good idea. That would be great. 421 of you have done it. 421 thumbs ups have come in. Thank you, all of you, for this. Uh, 
If you can get me to 500 thumbs ups here, that would be really cool. Uh, hit that thumbs up button for us. Um, try to tell the market to uh, tell YouTube to bring more people here. We'll follow these stocks uh, together. Um, see if we can get more followers of our stocks in here. We're at now 433 thumbs ups. We are 67 away from 500. Thank you, 434 now, and they're coming. Thank you so much. 434 thumbs ups and climbing 437. Thank you again. Um, Matterport 1586 up 35 cents. 23 and me, 883 down 13. ATIP still down 30 cents to 426. 438 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. GameStop up 68 cents. SoFi down 32 to 1660. Uh, Robinhood down 267. It's not a bad day. It's just, it's just you know, a little bit of red here and there. We had a crazy, very good day yesterday. Everything was green yesterday. Up to 500, 450 thumbs ups. Thank you, guys. Only 50 away from 500. Thank you for, for coming in here with these thumbs ups. I do appreciate this. Uh, all right. Is it typical for stocks to go down after earnings reports? Why is that even on good news? Uh, not typical. It, it just changes. Uh, stocks jump around. So 434 on the thumbs up. We're higher than that. Okay, that's the most unusual. What's the most natural run in terms of days or dollars for a stock? Either after great news or at great, there there is no natural. There's nothing. There's nothing natural about this market, <laughs> ever. Every market is a different market. Um, in the seventies, it was different. The eighties, it was different. The nineties, the two thousands, two tens, two twenties. It's always different, and there and it's different every quarter. Different every stock. Uh, there is no rhyme or reason to this. It is human emotion that drives prices of stocks. That's all it is. Human emotion. Uh, Beach Boy, hey, give give that man a thumbs up. Thank you, Beach Boy. Um, sexy uh, Sixtra might go to nine. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, Moderno's up. Is that because we need boosters? Um, maybe. Uh, Rita, all your SPACs went down after the merger. Maybe I should wait on the two I didn't buy and get them really cheap, like FWAA and NSH. And I hate averaging down. Uh, well, you know, Rita, it's... Uh, <laughs> uh, the markets are the markets. Uh, they, they sometimes they all go up. Sometimes they all go down. Sometimes some do, some don't. Other companies outperform other companies. Um, you can generalize it all you want. You can try to analyze it all you want, but reality is reality. Markets go their own way. Stocks go their own way from time to time. Sometimes there's a uniform sell-off, a uniform buy-in, and other times they're just like herding cats. They're all over the place. Um, you, you just got to make up your own mind what kind of works for you. Um, but these SPACs that I've talked about are not one-day wonder flips. I, I look at these as investments. I look at these companies as up-and-comers. I look at them as well-funded companies that now have the ability to do a whole lot of stuff being publicly traded on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange with a bunch of dough in their hands and the ability, I think, to pick up the phone and say to uh, investment bankers on New York, I got a deal that I want to close. I need two billion bucks. Uh, I can vend this entity into my public company and that will lift my shareholders value dramatically. I want to do a bond offering or a senior note offering and the banker will go, give me 10 minutes because I can find cash so easy right now. I can find $10 billion at the drop of a hat. How much you need? Only two billion. That's it. It's, you don't need any more. No, it's all I need. Give me five minutes, and uh, these guys can raise this money, cut cut deals, close deals, announce deals, and they will. They they all will. Um, but uh, Rita, you got to decide whether you want to stick around for the ride or, or gamble on holding the one at the right time. Uh, and that's a losing game if you're going to try to gamble that one. But hey, it's up to you. It's your money. It's not mine. Uncle Bruce, I sold three Sextera ten dollar puts yesterday for uh, for August the twentieth at one fifty four. I kind of feel bad to whomever I sold them to. <laughs> don't, don't don't worry about it. It's all right. Uh, you're making money. You sold them, and uh, and uh, the stock's going up, and uh, you're doing just fine. Uh, don't worry about it. They they won't feel sorry for you if the stock goes the other direction. So there you go. Me is falling, says Kev. Uh, Eight seventy six down twenty cents. Uh, guy in a buffalo gotta be in to win. That's right, Carter. Uh, wow, I was I was wrong. It's actually down level. I can't read. Um, <laughs> what's cooking today? One day wonder flips. Laugh out loud. Uncle Bruce has the best terminology. Arita. Well, Uncle Bruce, I am a long-term investor, but I like to make correct choices when I get it. I hear you, Arita. I, I'm with you. I, I, I love buying stock 
you know, on well, for a client. I loved it when I buy spot stock for a client. 15 minutes later, it was up 15, 20 cents already. The next day, it was up a buck a share. Oh, I love deals like that. But I also knew that those are few and far between. You, you just have to pick your spots, take your position, and just sit tight. Uh, you gotta, you gotta become Warren Buffett. You gotta wait out your returns, and the patient will win. Uh, John, today is a day to shut everything down and go to the beach. There you go, Michael. Technical analysis on stocks is like astrology for stocks. Change my mind, Bruce. <laughs> Yeah, change your mind. All right, uh, we're up 132 on the Dow. We're up 279 on S&P. We're down 62 on the NASDAQ right now. Matterport, 1593. We're still up 42 cents on the stock. It's one of the only ones performing. AMC is still up 30 cents, but barely hanging on. Everything else is red. I got Robinhood down 266. SoFi down 24, which is better. I've got GameStop down 52 cents. Not a big deal. ATIP down 29 cents, which is better. Uh, AMC down 22, Matterport up 41, 23 me, it's 876. Uh, fifth wall down 8 cents, but it's been climbing. Vector up 13, which is climbing. Uh, Navsite down 33, which is kind of flatlining. Uh, Sextera 899 on Sextera. The high of the day right now, we're threatening $9. 52,000 shares traded. That's all. 52,000 shares. We're up 49 cents. The six terror will take no volume to run this thing. It will take nothing to run it a couple of bucks, and it will happen. Uh, when these shares can trade so little and move this much, you get any kind of a buy wave coming in from awareness, uh, an analyst report, any kind of a rumor, uh, any kind of a deal. These will pop two, three bucks a share. I mean, every one of your SPACs is, a, is, is capable of popping two to three dollars a share in an hour at any time. Uh, that's how thinly traded some of your stocks are. You guys are are not yet known as as household names. Are going to be, and some of you are on your way to be, but uh, you got to just sit back and and patiently wait this out. It's the this is the hard stuff. This is the hard stuff to do. Very difficult to do. Anyway, uh, any thoughts on uh, Prior Man was asking, was asking uh, I'll read a question. They asked us. I said I heard there was a recent story of nine hundred thousand borrowed shares in GameStop. Someone to update me. No idea. Good morning, all you beautiful, beautiful people, says Deanna. Good morning. Going postal. Yeah, but beginning to wonder if call contracts shouldn't have been bought in January 23 instead of January 22. Time is ticking fast. I still lost with your your options. Which class should I listen to? I bought the second one, and it didn't help much. Um, you may want to watch the first one. Uh, the first one is the basic guide to how options work. You may want to do that, Rita. Uh, John Van, how can it be down when the Dow is hitting highs? I mean, it's possible. After moon. I sell all and wipe my hands of this rat race rig market. This is crazy. <laughs> my stocks like to pop, says Gioti. Michael, technical analysis has real application, at least in an attempt to games trading the bots. Jim Simons built an algorithm that has to boil down to technical analysis for the trade, but who knows? Um, uh, Pyro uh, Uncle B, I'm interested if you have thoughts on MRNA2. Do they have value beyond COVID? Is COVID enough? I don't know who MRNA is. Um, is that Moderna? I don't, I don't even, is that, who is it? Uh, uh, who is mRNA? I don't think I have, do I have a thing? Yeah, I do. I have mRNA right here. I got Moderna on my screen, down $27 today at, not, at $4.56. Um, Moderna has been around a while, and uh, they've been an up-and-comer, uh, but this um, COVID thing has taken them to a whole new level. And... Uh, the stock is where it is. Um, the virus is where it is. There might be booster shots. There might not. Um, there might be annual vaccinations. There might not. Um, good luck. I mean, you know, Moderna is Moderna. It's uh, it's a company that's trading at 54 times earnings. Uh, but its earnings are growing quickly. So very good. Um, the high and the low in the last year, the low is 54. The high of 497. It's now 457. So... Good luck with that. Uh, I, I have not been recommending the stock. Um, I didn't expect it to go to these levels. Um, if I had, I would have recommended it. But uh, uh, fundamentally, it's overpriced. But we're not in a fundamental market, are we? We're in a non-fundamental market. But boy, has that thing got you know look, uh, uh, volatility? Oh yes, is it ever? What, what can I say? Um, let's see. Uh, hmm. Uh, let's go. Um, 
here we go. I was in the Florida Panhandle this past week. So many U-Hauls coming into Florida. Um, U-Haul, says Deanna, Dehan. Uh, I'm up 189 on my Moderna, and, and God bless you for it. I, you know, look, I love it when you guys have winners, uh, but I, I can't be responsible for every single winner you got. How could I? Um, uh, you know, I, I have my, I have my favorites, and there are stocks that do well too. Uh, this is a, this is a free market. It trades. It's wild. It's wacky. We're by the way, 15.99 on Matterport. Um, 23 and me still down at 862. Uh, Sextera 907. How about that? 907 on Sextera. We didn't just get to nine. We busted it. That's nice to see. Uh, remember the all-time high uh, for for 52 weeks, 12 bucks. So Sextera is capable of much, much more. 56,900. That's all that's traded. Sextera is running on virtually no volume. This is beautiful. Beautiful. This is this is available. This can happen on any of your stocks at any time. You've just got to stick around and enjoy the show. Matterport, 16 bucks. We're back, baby. Uh, okay. Well, let's see how it goes. Uh, every day brings a new adventure. And uh, that's all I can tell you. Um, let's see. Matterport. Um, let's go. GameStop, 159.61. Don't a dollar sixty. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, let's go. Let's go. Um, mm, it's funny how that works. Uh, everyone's bashing Florida and our governor, yet they all want to come here. So here to uh, uh, something up the state that they didn't let the other ones left. Well, you know, maybe a bunch of Democrats are moving in and uh, they'll have a different governor shortly. Uh, who knows? Maybe that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just say it. Um, anyway, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Bruce, you are the muse to our trading success. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, Uncle Bruce, can you explain how options work? Alpha, loud, damn it, Jim. Uh, Michael hurts from laughing so hard. Um, Carter uh, got six dollar stocks to bet on. Uh, I remember Moderna was twenty bucks, and was uh, thinking about it. I can catch, I can't catch them all. That's true. You can't, you can't catch them all. Um, it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, I usually don't catch them all, laugh all, and I lose money every time I, I diversify. <laughs> uh, where are we at here? SoFi is down now 20 cents from, it's at 1671. It was as low as 1656, so it's come back 15 cents. Um, ATIP was as low as 415. It's now 427. It's come back a little bit. Still down 30 cents though. AMC holding a 50, 58 cent gain. Matterport 1594. 23 and Me is still at 858. That is about the low of the day, unfortunately, on on 23 and Me. Fifth Wall down two cents. Vector down up nine, holding on. Uh, Nav Site uh, 9, 964 down 34. Sextera down 923 up 73 cents on your Sextera shares. Any and all of you holding Sextera, way to go. Up to 923 and climbing with no resistance. 66,000 traded. Nothing, nothing trading on Sextera. And it is climbing 73 cents. That is a, uh, a rather interesting uh, move here. IBM up 45 cents to 141.70. The Dow is up 118 right now how about that sex stare up amc holding a 43 cent gain moderna um matterport up 39 23 me down 37 so we got some up some down some up some down 73 cent gain at 923 on sex wow what a run here on this one um uh, can you see a word or two on jim son i cannot um um, the one thing I wish I could buy is time. I want to go back to H5, so he needs to go back. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, we all want that, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Cloak to sing. I was just in Fort Myers, Florida last week. I loved it. Uh, sun, sand, and low gas prices and no taxes. I love it. I'm from Illinois, by the way. Um, let's see. Uh, people waited till today to read the six dollar earnings and react. Maybe, maybe that's it. Nine twenty three on the stock. Um, you know, it's uh, it's going higher. Definitely with with a vengeance, it's going higher. 
Uh, very good move here. Uh, Matterport, 15.89, up 38 cents. Uh, AMC holding a 37 cent gain. Robinhood still down 2.23. So far, it's now down only 16 cents. It's now at 16.74. It's coming back almost 20 cents from the low of the day here. So, so far, definitely coming on. All right. Uh, ATIP down 30 cents to 4.27 after hitting a low 4.15. That's where we're at there. Six zero. Yeah, 9.23 on 6 era, 67,400 traded. Wow. That's that's amazing to me. That's amazing to me. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, Let's see. What else are we going on here? Uh, Germany's train drivers plan to go on the nationwide strike over wages. There you go. Uh, powerful unions over there. Um Mm, mm, mm. Dow up 122, S&P up 0.4, NASDAQ down 82 points, oil up 232 a barrel right now. Um, mm, 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 okay. GameStop holding 159 right now, down 213, uh, low of the day on GameStop right now. Okay. All right. Microsoft down two. Apple down twenty six cents. Tesla down eight seventy. Bed Bath and Beyond up a dollar fourteen. Royal Caribbean up a dollar seventy eight, despite the the variance and everything else. Amazon down fifteen bucks. Facebook down a dollar sixty. Google down five eighty. All these uh, Fang stocks are under pressure. We're up eight sixty one on Goldman Sachs. Going higher. Uh, American Airlines up 53 cents to 2109. <clears throat> interesting market. Interesting, interesting market. Okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, Uh, okay, Blair, you hang in there, buddy. Um, <laughs> thank you for the 473 thumbs ups today, everybody. Appreciate your support there. Uh, keep them coming. Uh, and uh, what else is going on here? Uh, thank you all for uh, for popping by. Kind words on these private emails you send me. Appreciate it. Uh, and uh, thank you all for joining in the show here what's going on um, following these markets oh my following these markets okay okay Ah, uh, let's see. Um, I love that Sextera is running, and I already, as I already have two 1250 calls, call contracts for January. I was trying to average down with two more. I'm leaving those 35 cent calls in to see if it comes back to me. Right on. Uh, just spent 180 bucks to roll out of ATIP, $10 November, to uh, 7 and a half February. Uh, that's a good move. Better insurance to make some money. Cast, uh, cost of learning. Have a good one, Uncle B. Yeah, that's a good move. Um, Moving into 750s uh, on ATIP, um, you know you're 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 coming way much closer in. Uh, good. Okay. Let's hope this makes a good move. And you've given yourself more time. I like that. Uh, anyway, there we have it. Um, we're only 20 thumbs away from 500. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate that very much. Uh, Okay, we've got uh, Matterport sitting at 15.88, up 36 cents. We have 23 Me, unfortunately, down 40 cents to 8.56. Uh, 
Vector up a dime. Navsite still at 963. It's not changing. And Sextera 923. It's just flatlining here now on 84,000. 923 a share. It's just sitting there. Um, can't make it. Can't make anything of it. Up 28 cents on IBM. Breaking our hearts. Uh, and Navsite. Yeah, 961 low. 963 last trade on 161,000. Very quiet here. GameStop 158.63 down 250 uh, at the moment and uh, 428 on ATIP. We're bouncing up a bit from 415. Not a heck of a lot, but just a little, little bit. All right. Dow up 126. Nothing going on. It's a quiet one this morning, okay? Uh, all right. Thank you, guys. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at headlines here. What is going on? Louisiana tops the United States in new COVID cases, and Arkansas sees record numbers of hospitalizations. I believe those are two of the five least inoculated states, as far as I know. Uh, so the, not surprising to see these uh, scary numbers, I guess. Louisiana apparently has vaccinated 38% of their residents. Um, they now have 5,380 cases on Monday, and that's up 84% from two weeks ago. Hospitalizations are up 124%. Deaths are up 221%. Florida hospitalizations are weekly, roughly equal to where they were in their previous peak last summer. Case numbers recently set fresh records. Uh, Texas, 9,500 patients are currently in hospitals. We had uh, four people die in the wow, we had four people die in interior health here yesterday. Um, wow. Mm. Uh, let's see. Not at Creston. <laughs> Just the interior. interior yeah, well, it's the interior is huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. In America, 50% of Americans are now fully vaccinated. 50% of eligible adults who can get the shot are fully vaccinated. Uh, so 50% is the magic number to equal the average of the country. Uh, interesting. Um, yeah. The Pentagon said on Monday it would require members of the U.S. military to get the shot by the September 15th. Automatic, no questions asked. Uh, Mm. Woo. Mm. Stats are just mind numbing. They're just mind numbing. These statistics, absolutely mind numbing. Let me go back. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Each each of these stats, these are actual people. That's the saddest thing about it. That you know, the problem here is we're dealing with actual human beings. And that is that is so so unfortunate. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's see now uh, what we can do here. Okay. There we go. the The Senate is the Senate is set to pass the infrastructure bill. Uh, SoftBank profit falls as tech rally cools. Um, Chinese bond swings threaten global debt investors. Um, and uh, some people are shying away from restaurants as the Delta variant spreads. France, Italy impose strict vaccine mandates. Uh,
Yep, 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 yep. Just looking at headlines here on the uh, on the uh, Wall Street Journal. Uh, watching what they're saying over here. Back to our stocks. We've got. Uh, <clears throat> See, here we go. The Dow is still up 126. S&P down 0.4. NASDAQ down 95. And that's what we have here. That's the kind of market we're dealing with right now, folks. Not a lot to, to tell you here. Um, some are up today. Some of our stocks are higher. Some are lower. Winners would be a Matterport up 39 cents to 15.90. Um, VACQ holding a 12 cent gain. Sextera up 70 cents to 9.20. That's the big winner today. IBM up 37 cents, but it just keeps meandering along. It's it's just not you know consistently going higher. Um, it's just a you know a little bit of a run here. Uh, but other than that, we have we have red here. We have uh, we have SoFi at uh, 1669 down 22 cents. We have GameStop at 15904 down 209. That is a bit better though than where it was this morning. Uh, but uh, not a lot to get excited about. The volume on GameStop is. Uh, 850,000 shares, the low of 158.31, and we're in work 59.04. So we're not going anywhere here. Um, ATIP uh, volume of 809,000, low of the day, 415. We're at 426. So not much to report there either. Uh, AMC holding a 37 cent gain. That's all. Uh, Matterport now 15.92 at 41 cents. But uh, that's what we've got, kids. I wish I could tell you more exciting, detailed stuff, but um, the markets are just not um, reacting all that much at the moment. And so there you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, what can I say? All right. Anyway, there it is. Um, I'm going to uh, call it a day. We're going to be back at 3 o'clock this afternoon for the final hour. Uh, we'll keep an eye open for any breaking news in the meantime. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you for all your uh, kind words and, uh, and uh, letting me know what you're hearing out there. We'll, uh, we'll scour for some other news. If we find any more news, we'll let you in on it this afternoon as we cover the last, uh, the last hour of the day. Okay. Take care, everybody. Uh, stay healthy. We'll talk to you real soon. This is Bruce from Creston. Bye for now.